Welcome back to another console collector video. Hey everybody, console collector here. It's time, time for the brand new house game room tour. As most of you know, I sold my entire GameCube collection in 2020, and that has given me the opportunity to buy a house that I absolutely love. I've had previous game rooms that I've made work, but I've never been truly happy with the layouts. Well, when I was shopping around for a house, I fell in love with this layout, and now I can build my ultimate dream game room. With that said though, it's not easy to build the ultimate dream game room. I've actually been in this house for just over a year now, and it's taken me that long to get the game room to this point. I had some stuff set up, and it didn't work out, or I didn't like the overall layout, so I had to move it, measure, move things again live with it for a couple weeks, change again. It's been a crazy time setting up this game room. I'm finally at the point where I'm happy with it and I'm ready to share it with the world. Before we get started though, I actually want to do a quick little walkthrough of the entire game room just so you can kind of get an idea of how the layout works down here. There's so much to cover in this, I want it to be as enjoyable as possible. So let's do a walkthrough and then jump right into it. As we walk through the game room, I just wanted to quickly talk about my thoughts on setting up this game room. For me personally, I think a game room should represent the collector, what they're into, and an expression of themselves as a gamer. For me personally, I'm all about that presentation. I want my game room to have that wow factor. You walk in and you are blown away. You are speechless. I wanted my game room to have a museum kind of feel where it can represent things in gaming history as well as something about me. So every single thing in this game room has a purpose, has some kind of meaning to me as a person, as a collector, as a gamer. I also wanted my game room to be welcoming and comfortable. I want you to walk in and feel like you can just jump on anything and give it a play. Anybody can just throw games on a shelf and have walls and walls of games. That's not what I'm about personally. I wanted my game room to be accessible for everybody, yet maintain that wow factor. As we finish off the quick little walkthrough, I want to take a minute to say thank you. This collection didn't happen overnight. This collection didn't happen by myself. I want to thank everyone that has helped contribute to this game room. Whether it's my friends who helped me move everything into this place, or fellow collectors that gave me some good deals or did trades with me, even the random people that I got super good scores from in the wild, thank you to all of you. Also a big thanks to my family. My wife has been super supportive in building this collection. My kids I'm thankful for, they've even been a big help. Just a big thank you to everyone, especially all of you. You're watching this video, thank you. Thank you for the support on this channel. Thank you for watching my videos and inspiring me to share this collection with everyone. So a huge thank you to everybody. Finally, I just want to say how thankful I am for this collection. I feel truly fortunate that I have such an amazing collection and I can't wait to share it with all of you. So let's get started. Welcome to Animal Crossing. First thing you see when you approach the game room is this Animal Crossing New Horizons in-store standee. As we head down the stairs, you look to the left here and you can see some posters here we have a pokemon poster here some club nintendo posters here which you could only get through the club nintendo point system we have some other pokemon posters here a zelda Link's awakening poster this is just some artwork from my family that they made me there we got ness and shiny umbreon there heading down the stairs a little more we see my super smash bros ultimate banner this is a cloth banner, which I got before any DLC came out, so this is just the base roster here. Below the banner here, I have a few amiibos. You can see here my Mi 3 pack still sealed. And up above here, we have some Mr. Game & Watch amiibos, which these are the three different versions you could get of him. Beside that, we have some Animal Crossing amiibos here. We got Tom Nook, we got Timmy and Tommy, Mr. Rossetti, and this is the second print with the smaller face villager. Below that we have some World of Nintendo figures there. Rakitu, Star Mario, we got Ludwig, Iggy, Bowser Jr. Below that I have some Zelda ones. We got Zelda, 
the Dark Link, and then this is the Skull Kid, but it's the Wind Waker misprint version. We got Samus there, Abu, and then kind of randomly here we have a Mega Mawile figure. So below her we have some more Smash Bros for Wii U Club Nintendo posters. That's one of my favorites there with Villager. Then we have the Rosalina one here. On the right of the wall here we have a Kanto map from Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu for the Switch. Under that we have a Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire poster. Next to that we have a couple Shovel Knight Amiibos, the normal one and the gold Shovel Knight. Beside that we have a Famicom Rob Amiibo. Then we got some World of Nintendo figures here, Tom Nook, Villager, we got Kamek, we got Samus, and then all the Pikmin ones. Purple Pikmin, Blue Pikmin, Yellow Pikmin, Red Pikmin, and of course Olimar. Below that we have the Retro 3 Pack Amiibos, and sitting on top of those you can see Famicom Rob Loose, another Mr. Game & Watch, and then a custom Duck Hunt. Moving along we have a North American Famicom Rob Amiibo there, the 8-bit Mario Amiibos, then the Gold and Silver Mario Amiibos, then we have a Japanese NES, a Japanese Olimar, and a European Bowser Jr. On top a couple more custom Amiibos. Here's another Let's Go Eevee and Pikachu poster. Then we have some of my Misfit Amiibos. This one here, Game & Watch fell off his stand inside the box. All these Misfit Amiibos are still sealed in their boxes. The Misfit Amiibos do have a variety of issues with them. For instance, Donkey Kong here is just loose in his box, as is Peach and Rosalina. But then we look here and Dr. Mario is actually broken in half and he's still sealed. Here's everybody's favorite, Decapa Toad. Toad's head has come right off. Then we got Pikachu broken off its stand, Fox broken off its stand. This is my most recent Misfit Amiibo, it's Pichu broken off its stand. Then we have a loose Ganondorf, and then we have loose Yoshi, that's actually my very first Misfit Amiibo. Then we have a loose Pikachu, and then this Bowser Jr. actually has a little hair inside if you can see it, sealed in the box. Yep, somebody's nasty hair inside this box. Moving over here, we can see some more custom Amiibos here that I painted. And then just a generic toad there. Up here we have my Fire Emblem Amiibos. We got Chrom, Tiki, Alm, and Celica. And then here's another Misfit Amiibo box here. This is the Inkling 3-pack with a loose squid in the middle. Down here we have a Pokemon Sword and Shield pre-order bonus. And then another Club Nintendo Smash Bros poster here. This is the Duck Hunt one. Moving way up to the top here, we got some more of my favorite amiibos. We got a Waluigi, a Wario, the super cool glow in the dark boo amiibo. We got Bowser, we got Wedding Bowser, Koopa Troopa, and Blue Yarn Yoshi. Going back here, we see the main door to the game room. On the top here, we have my favorite Club Nintendo Smash poster. This is Bowser Jr. and the Koopa Kids. And below that, a really cool recent addition. It's an in-store standee for the new Pokemon Snap for the Nintendo Switch. Alright, let's head in. As we head in, we're going to take a quick left here, and you'll see this door here. On this door, we have a Mario Kart 8 Deluxe in-store promo sign. Behind this door, we have the Game Room Washroom. Yes, this Game Room has its own washroom. Absolutely amazing thing to have in the game room. You can just take a break from your game, come in here, do your business, get back to the action. The first thing you notice in the game room washroom is obviously the Super Mario Bros. shower curtain. I thought the shower curtain was super cool. It has Bowser on it, of course, so it was really fitting for the game room washroom. Looking over to the left of that, I have this four foot in store Zelda Spirit Tracks DS promo sign. This thing is massive, but boy, it sure is cool. This thing is actually some kind of plastic material, so it's not going to get damaged or warped in the game room washroom. Over to the left of the Zelda promo, I have this Eat Sleep Game Repeat picture, 
and then kind of randomly this Nintendo Power poster for NHL Hits 2002 on the GameCube. Up above here I have the Demo poster which Panda Queen got me. Going down to the bottom here I actually have these magazine racks. Yep and they are full of gaming magazines so you can come in here do your business and you can read some classic gaming magazines we got stuff from nintendo power we got electronic gaming monthly gmr and even this guinness world records book here so lots of reading material while you do your business swinging over here beside the mirror i have this really cool bowser picture gotta represent bowser in the gaming washroom and then this Venom picture here as well. Moving along, I got some Perler art here from my wife. We got Bowser, we got Majora's Mask, we got Kirby, we got a Pikmin, a Animal Crossing Leaf, Animal Crossing Bell Bag, and then the Master Sword and Hylian Shield. That's pretty much it for the game room washroom. So let's head out to the main part of the game room. Now that we're in the main game room we look to the left of the washroom door there and we have this really cool Pokemon trading card game poster which features all the different starters from Gen 1 all the way up to Gen 8. Below that we have a Kingdom Hearts 3 pre-order bonus here with Woody. Beside that here we have this little Among Us that my son made me hung up there. And then here we have a replica Keyblade from Kingdom Hearts. It's actually made of metal. It's super cool. Really cool to add that in the game room. Up here we have a Super Smash Bros. Championship belt. Right here we have a Super Smash Bros. Brawl lanyard. And up above we have the Mario Rabbid figure still sealed. Mario, Luigi, Peach, and Yoshi. Over to the right here is all my glass shelves. All these glass shelves have really unique cool things in them. We're going to look through each shelf one by one, but before we do that, on top of the glass shelves is where I keep a lot of unique and cool items. A lot of boxes and stuff like that. So, right at the very start here, you can see we have my Atari XE box there, my Complete and Box Rollin' Rocker. Up there I have a CDI controller box. Beside that, a Platinum Game Boy Advance. This is my Amiga CD32 box. Right here we have a Magnavox CDI box. I got this really cool Soul Calibur 2 fight stick. Then I got a Wii Mini complete in box. Here's my Miracle Piano for the NES. This was a real cool thing that I got years ago that I really like. Up here's my complete in box Sega 32X. Up here's a couple of those tabletop arcades. We got Donkey Kong and Pac-Man there. Beside those, representing one of my favorite games of all time, I have a NECA Smoker figure from Left 4 Dead. Up there we have the Power Glove, complete in box. Right here I have my Lynx Model 1 in box. Then I have some original Xboxes here. That's the, the green transparent box and the crystal box. Here's a World of Nintendo Peach's Castle with a couple of Mario 3D World Amiibos there. My son really likes that. Up here I have a sealed... Yoshi's Woolly World Poochie set there for 3DS. Beside that, I have my Sega Game Gear and my Sega Saturn that someone paid $80 for at one point. Still cool, it has the sticker. Then I got my Genesis consoles. We got Genesis Model 1, Genesis Model 2, Genesis Model 3. Up there's the Homer car from The Simpsons, and then the Sega CD right beside it. Up here we have a Turbo Pad controller box. Then we have my Barcode Battler. That's from when I was a kid. That thing really sucks. Then here's my TurboGrafx-16 box. Panasonic FZ-10 model. The box there for the 3DO. Then the Neo Geo AES box. Right here I have the Yoshi's Willy World. Blue Yarn Yoshi set still sealed. WrestleMania 2000 on the Game Boy Color. Then my complete in box Metal Gear Solid for the Game Boy Color. Moving up here, I have my Turbo Booster Plus, and then I have my NES Rob Deluxe set there, complete in box. Super cool. Then I just got some more of the Rabbit figures here, the larger ones. Then this is my Atari Jaguar box. Beside that, I have my Pikachu N64 set there, complete in box. 
Then I have the Wonder Swan Color, Final Fantasy Edition there. It's complete in box. Under that is my Jaguar CD box, which is super mint. And then my Sega CDX box. Over here we have my Sears Telegames Video Arcade, complete in box. Then I have a Boomer from Left 4 Dead there, that's also a NECA figure. Then I have the Gamecom complete in box. Then up here I have the Neo Geo CD. And below that is the Atari 2600 Vader box there. Then I have a standard N64 complete in box there. And then my super beat up Magnavox Odyssey 2 box there. Sitting on top is the Game & Watch Super Mario Bros that just came out. Now let's go over to the other side there and take a look in the glass cabinets. This shelf here is basically just a little tribute to Sega in general. It has a lot of my cool Sega stuff in it. For instance here, my Sega CDX console with Gargoyle sitting in it. My Rare Saturn game here, Batman Forever. Beside that, Sonic and Knuckles complete in box. Then the Action 52 for the Genesis. My complete in box, Knuckles Chaotix there for the 32X. A sealed Shaq Fu with his rap CD. Sonic 3D Blast there. Then the Sega CD32X version of Night Trap. Down below there, you see this dummy with the R Zone. That thing sucks, but it's really fun to make your friends play it. Then we got a complete in box hyperscan there. Then we have a Sega Genesis power base converter, which lets you play your Sega Master System games on your Genesis. In front of that here, the ill fated Ouya console there. Then here is a complete in box Sega channel. Yeah, you remember that thing? It's really cool to have that in the collection. Down here we have the three hip gear screen controllers. I actually recently did a video on these, so if you want to know more about them, check out that video. We have the GameCube, the PS2, and the original Xbox. Below those, I have some old school stuff. Here's a complete in box Atari 2600 version of ET. In the back there's my Atari 5200 and then a 7800 Pro system there. And then a complete in box IntelliVoice voice synthesis module. On to the next shelf here, this is the 3DO shelf. We have the 3DO FZ model here, the most recognizable and iconic 3DO. Sitting on top of those, I have Virtuoso and Plumbers Don't Wear Ties. Then we got Road Rash here on this side and Dragon's Lair. And then over here we have Braindead 13 and Corpse Killer. Under the 3DO is my little tribute to Marvel vs. Capcom. I love the Marvel vs. Capcom series, particularly Marvel vs. Capcom 2, so this shelf is dedicated to that series. Here you can see Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite in the back there, even though it sucks. Then we got Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 for the PS3 there, and then Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom for the PS4. That has the DLC on it, which is cool. Then we got the statues here from the collector's edition of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Got this cool little comic there in the back. And then Ray right over here, we can see the Infinity Stones. And then of course Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for the original Xbox. This shelf here is my PS2 shelf. First thing you'll notice in the back there is a clear blue Ocean PS2. That's a Japanese only console. Then you see some Grand Theft Auto Vice City soundtracks. I actually bought that whole set from a CD store back in the day. Definitely love V-Rock and Flash the best. Right here is an official wireless PS2 controller. That's sitting on a Baraka PS2 controller. That's pretty cool. That's still sealed. And that's sitting on a Metal Gear Solid The Essential Collection for PS2. Pretty uncommon set. Then we got my slim PS2s here. We got the pink and the black there. And then I also have the silver and the white one there. There is a red one. I don't have that, but it is a Japanese one. Then we got Seaman 2 at the bottom there. That's Japanese only. Some more Vice City soundtracks. The very bottom of this shelf, we have more old school stuff. We have Ghostbusters for the Atari 2600 there, complete in box. A couple of Odyssey games complete in box, and then the ColecoVision. And I also have the expansion module for the ColecoVision, which lets you play Atari 2600 games on your ColecoVision. Basically, it's like playing a PS4 game on an Xbox One. Crazy. And then there's the Coleco Gemini just sitting right there. On to the next shelf, we have my Virtual Boy. This thing still works great all these years later. I actually really love the Virtual Boy. And then with it, I have my entire Virtual Boy collection. Yes, the full set. 
I do have some Japanese ones mixed in there, but some notable ones there like 3D Tetris, Waterworld, and Wario Land. Those are some of my favorites. And then this one here, it's actually a survival horror game on the Virtual Boy. It's super cool. I highly recommend you check that one out. Under that is my little tribute shelf to Bowser. Bowser is my favorite video game character of all time, so I definitely had to dedicate a shelf to Bowser. Just some really random stuff in here. Anything Bowser I find, I usually pick up and put in here. We got different Bowser figures, some Bowser Jr. figures, Bowser stuffy, Amiibos, some Hot Wheels, a sealed Mario Party 10 Bowser there. Then you can see my Bowser Wiimote there with box. And then just some more random stuff here. Even this giant Bowser World of Nintendo figure there. And then in front of him, I have the Koopa Kid little figures, which are neat. I love the Koopa Kids as well. I thought they were very fitting for this shelf. Below that we have two of the four Pokemon N64s. We have the blue and orange Japanese 64s with the matching controllers. Underneath that we have my little Dreamcast section. Here we can see I have a couple of sealed blue VMUs in the back there. We have my rarest Dreamcast game and my favorite one, Cannon Spike. Such a great fun game. Then here's my Sega Sports Black Dreamcast, which is complete in box. Then we got Gunbird 2 on Dreamcast, which was a lot of fun. I love playing as Morgan in that from Darkstalkers. And then Seaman 2, such a weird game, but it's kind of funny. Up next is the CDI shelf. There's a decent version of Tetris there. Here's one of the worst games of all time, Dark Castle on CDI. And then we have the Triforce of Crap here. We have the Zelda, Wand of Gamelon, Zelda's Adventure, and Link Faces of Evil. And then here's the top loader Magnavox CDI with the really goofy controller. Below the CDI I have my Kingdom Hearts shelf. I love the Kingdom Hearts series of games. They're really fun. I think it's a great crossover series. So I had to pay a little tribute to Kingdom Hearts. Got a variety of different figures here. So you can see Sora, a Chippendale. We see Zero there, Donald Duck. We got Hercules there and Pete. We got Squall and Sephiroth, some Heartless, and yes, even Cloud in the corner there. You can see Mickey Mouse. And that's the all-in-one PS4 package for Kingdom Hearts, which has every Kingdom Hearts game on it. And finally, we have the super cool Jack the Pumpkin King. Here we have the other two Pokemon N64s. We have the North American Pikachu N64, and then the PAL region Pokemon Stadium N64. That's actually my favorite of the four Pokemon N64s. And on the side, we just have some Evolution figures. Bottom of the shelf, some more old school stuff. You can see He-Man on the Intellivision Complete Box. My favorite Intellivision game, Snafu. My rarest Sega Master System game, Elf, with the Sega Master System behind it. And then at the very bottom, we have my Tandy Vision. Next shelf kicks off with my Atari Jaguar and Jaguar CD. At the very back there we have a complete box copy of Doom. Then we have Alien vs Predator sitting in it. And inside the Jaguar CD a copy of Battle Morph. And fortunately my Jaguar and Jaguar CD still work great even in 2021. Under the Jaguar we have my Pikmin shelf. Pikmin is one of my favorite game series of all time. So I had to have a shelf dedicated to it. In the back there we have a Pikmin 3 poster which makes a great backdrop for the shelf. We have a Pikmin 1 strategy guide there, the Pikmin 2 strategy guide over here. In the back we have the Japanese versions of Pikmin 1 and 2 on GameCube. Here's a custom Pikmin mug that I got as a gift one time, a sealed Pikmin amiibo, a sealed Olimar amiibo, and then right here I have a 3DS cart holder from Club Nintendo featuring Pikmin. In the middle here is my Pikmin army. I used to pick up these World of Nintendo Pikmin a lot and every time I got one I'd add it to the Pikmin army. Olmar surrounded in the middle there. They are sitting on the Nintendo Power issues featuring Pikmin 1 and 2. Under the Pikmin here we have my Mountain Dew original Xbox. This is one of my favorite things in the game room as well. I still remember when I got it I couldn't believe I got such a cool unique rare console. Sitting behind them, I have the original Xbox Duke controllers that were remade for the Xbox One. I have all three complete in box. We got the clear red there, and then the clear green and the standard black are tucked away in the bottom below. 
right here we have a sealed copy of Painkiller for the original Xbox. In front we have Jurassic Park Operation Genesis and then Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast. Just a couple of my rare Xbox games. At the bottom of the shelf is my little Wii shelf. Tucked away in the back there I have a copy of Super Mario Galaxy 2 still sealed. I actually bought that new and never got around to opening it. It's sitting on my portable Wii screen. It actually flips up and you can play Wii in your car. Yeah, completely unnecessary but cool. It's sitting on top of my sealed Wii Mini which is the Mario Kart Wii version there. And then I got all four of the Wii consoles here. We got the red with matching remote, the blue with the matching remote, the white with the matching remote, and then the black. Next shelf starts off with my Amiga CD32. I always thought this thing had such a weird looking controller. Up here is a sealed copy of The Town With No Name. It's such a goofy game but it's a lot of fun to play with friends if you want to have a good laugh. Underneath that is my shelf dedicated to Venom. Venom is my favorite comic book character of all time. Right in front here you can see my Venom figure which is from the Disney store. He actually talks and stuff. He's super cool, super big. Tucked behind him is the QVC Shopping Channel Maximum Carnage Collector Set. I actually recently traded off my sealed one for one of my GameCube kiosks. I did a video on that if you want to check it out. Then here we got another Spider-Man figure and then Separation Anxiety on Genesis and Super Nintendo. I love that cover art. And then on this side we have Maximum Carnage for the Genesis and the Super Nintendo as well. I really love these 16-bit Spider-Man games. Moving on down, we have a little shelf here dedicated to the original NES. Over to the side here, I have a sealed NES Classic controller there. Then I have a couple of original NES controllers still in box. Some NES controller mints there. In the very back, we have the top-loading control deck, complete in box. Then I have Captain N, the Game Master DVD series. And of course, I have my power glove there on display. Then I have a Nintendo 3DS, NES version, a Nintendo 4 score, and then an NES Game Genie complete in box. Then a Game Boy Advance NES Classic Edition there. And then right here is the Nintendo Game Pack Scratch Off Game Cards. It's completely sealed. It's uh, pretty cool. I don't know if I should ever open that one day, but it's a neat little addition to this shelf. Bottom shelf here is the Wii U's. I have both the white and the black we use with their matching game pads. I also have their matching Pro Controllers. Tucked away in the back there is the third version of the Wii U which is the Zelda Wind Waker HD Wii U. That's complete in box. The only difference between the Zelda Wii U and the other black one is it has a cool Zelda game pad. Next shelf is the Turbo 16 shelf. First thing you notice is the Turbo Graphics 16 Mini. Over to the left here we see a Turbo Play Flyer. Then there's my Turbo Express, which still works great. It's basically a portable Turbo Graphics 16. Over in the corner we have a complete in box Bomberman. Here's my Darkwing Duck. Then we have the Turbo Graphics console itself, and then the Turbo CD with the system card. Then we have my rarest Turbo game, Bonk 3. Then we have my favorite Turbo game, Bomberman 93. And then a really fun, cool game, Air Zonk. Under that we have the Fire Emblem shelf. I love the Fire Emblem series, so I had to have a shelf dedicated to it. Here we can see Fire Emblem Three Houses, Fire Emblem Awakening, a sealed Fire Emblem Echoes for the 3DS. Then we got Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon on the DS. Right here's my not for resale version of Fire Emblem the Sacred Stones. And then over there we have Fire Emblem Warriors on Switch, still sealed. It's the collector's edition. Right behind Lucina Figma figure there, we have Fire Emblem Fates, the special edition, that's still sealed. And then Fire Emblem Sacred Stones on GBA sealed. And then a complete in box Fire Emblem on the Game Boy Advance. Then we have Celica Amiibo, Chrom Amiibo, Tiki Amiibo, and my custom female Robin Amiibo. Moving on, we have the Super Nintendo shelf. 
in the back there, the Super Nintendo Control Deck is complete in box. That's basically the slimmed down version of the Super Nintendo. Then we have a Super Nintendo version of the 3DS. A couple of retro figures there. We have a complete in box Super Nintendo controller. A complete in box Super Game Boy. We've got the SNES Classic there at the very bottom. That one's still brand new, unused. And then we got the Super Multi-Tap here, which is great for Bomberman on Super Nintendo. And then the Super Nintendo... Game Genie, complete in box. Under that shelf here, we have some original Xbox stuff. But up top here, we have the Xbox 360 HD DVD drive. Basically, you plug it into your Xbox 360 and you can play the ill-fated HD DVDs there, which you can see Land of the Dead up there. It's pretty much useless. It still works, but... It's more of a collector's piece at this point. And then that is sitting on my green original Xbox, my blue transparent original Xbox, and then a crystal original Xbox. In front of those, some more rare and favorite games of mine, Barbie Horse Adventure, Futurama, and Stubbs, The Rebel Without a Pulse. I absolutely love that game. It's my favorite original Xbox game. I can't wait for it to come out on Switch. Onto the next shelf, we have the Turbo Duo. This is the Japanese version. The good thing about Turbo CD is it's region free, so you can play any Turbo CD games on it. Over there is the Bomberman Shoot 'em Up, which is a lot of fun. And then of course, everyone's favorite, Castlevania, Rondo of Blood. Next shelf here is dedicated to Mega Man. I love the Mega Man series, so I had to have a shelf dedicated to the Blue Bomber. Up front here, we have a couple of Mega Man Pixel Pals and a little Mega Man figure there. Behind there, we have Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, complete in box for the NES. This side, we have Mega Man 4, 5, and 6, complete in box for the NES. In the middle here, we have Mega Man 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 on Game Boy in box. Then we have Mega Man 11, collector's edition there for Switch. And then the Mega Man Legacy collection for the 3DS. They both come with Amiibos. Then we have a Mega Man helmet there. And then in the back, we have a Mega Man and Sonic comic book. That's pretty cool. We got another Mega Man Amiibo there, and then a custom red Mega Man that I did. Right in the middle here at the bottom, we have the Mega Man Powered Up and Mega Man Maverick X UMD Dual Pack for the PSP. That's still sealed. Then we've got Mega Man Legacy Collection 1 and 2 for the Switch. Mega Man Legends, Mega Man Legends 2, and Mega Man 8 for the PS1. And then my Mega Man 7 in box for the Super Nintendo. Moving on from Mega Man, we have a PlayStation 1 shelf. The PlayStation 1 had a huge influence on me, so I had to have a shelf dedicated to it. One of the first things you may notice here is the PS1 Mini with the LCD screen. That's the box for it in the back. There's an original PlayStation 1 controller before they added the joysticks. And then there's a PlayStation Classic sitting on top. We got Lemmings Long Box there for the PS1 on this side. Then we have the original Resident Evil long box right there. Down on this side we have Pepsi Man for PS1. That's such a fun game. Unfortunately it's Japanese only, but still a great game. And then there's the classic PlayStation box right there. And then here, Silent Hill. This game is my favorite PlayStation 1 game of all time. Then we have the PlayStation Magazine Demo Disc 16. I did a video on this demo disc quite a while ago now. It basically explains how Silent Hill started my love for horror games. Yes, that demo disc had a sample of Silent Hill on it and that single demo started my love for horror games. Down here we have a shelf dedicated to the Xbox 360. The Xbox 360 is actually one of my favorite consoles of all time. In front here we have a gold controller with a white chat pad and then a blue chrome controller with the black chat pad. Here we have a Street Fighter Cross Tekken with Street Fighter 4 combo pack there, that's still sealed. Then we have Grand Theft Auto 5 sealed over in the corner beside the Halo Xbox. In the middle here we have a Resident Evil 5 Xbox console and then we have my R2-D2 Star Wars Xbox console there. They all have their matching controllers. 
Just over to the left here, you can see the Death Smiles Collector's Edition for the Xbox 360. Then tucked away up there, we have the Dead Rising 2 Zombrex Edition. That one's still sealed. I do have a complete in-box version. That's a cool set. We've got the DVD remote for the 360. Then we have Marvel Ultimate Alliance Gold Edition there. That's one of my favorite 360 games. It's cool because that one actually has all the DLC characters on the disc. Next shelf, we start off with the Neo Geo AES. We got a couple games there in the back. Even Fatal Fury there with Terry Bogart. I always thought that guy on the cover with Terry looked like Sid Vicious. This here is my Poke Shelf. It's basically just a bunch of random cool Pokemon stuff I've gotten over the years. Got stuff like this Pokemon trading card game Dialga Tin with a figure. On the side here we have some Game Boy Advance video cartridges. They're all complete in box. It's basically Pokemon episodes on a GBA cart. Got a Reshiram figure there. And then I have the sets of Kanto and Johto Pokemon badges there. We've got a Mega Blaziken right there. Then we have Pokemon Teaches Typing for the DS. It basically comes with a keyboard, which is a cool little set. Then we got Pocket Monsters, the green version, Japanese only, my childhood Pokedex there. And then right here we have the Burger King. Pokemon Pokeballs. They basically had those gold Pokemon cards in them. That's the full set from back in the day. Got a couple of Pokemon toys here. I got the Pokemon Power Pamphlet. Those had the Burger King Pokemon card toys. We get a steel case of the Blu-ray versions of Pokemon. The first movie, the second one, and the third one. There's a Luxury Ball. It's my favorite Pokeball. And then finally we have the Pokemon Pikachu 2 from Gold and Silver. Up next, we just have some cool Game Boy and Game Boy Advance stuff. Some accessories and some randomness. We got a Game Boy camera there. Some Game Boy printer paper. We got the Pokemon Pikachu pocket printer there. Which is Japanese only. And then the North American Game Boy printer. And then the Mario Party game that nobody ever talks about. Mario Party for the e-reader. Got a variety of sealed e-reader card packs there. Including this cool Animal Crossing one. Here we have F1 Race for the Game Boy. It basically came bundled with the four player multi-tap, which I used to play with my brothers and sister. Right over here we have my super rare Pokemon DS here. It's the Diamond and Pearl Palkia and Dialga set. It's 100% sealed. In the back there we have my e-reader bundle. It comes with a sealed Game Boy Advance inside and a sealed e-reader. And that is the big box version that is still sealed. And then just up front here we have my Game Boy Micro complete in box. The bottom shelf here is dedicated to the PlayStation 3. At the very top there you can see Resident Evil 6 Anthology. That basically came with all the Resident Evil games 1 through 6 up to that point when that was released. A sealed copy of Afro Samurai. It has the cool outer sleeve. And then a sealed copy of Street Fighter Cross Tekken the Special Edition. I also have a special edition PS3 version of Grand Theft Auto 5 sealed and then this cool little resistance bundle there. Then I have the four console variations of the Super Slim. We have the white, black, red, and the blue. And then I have a couple of PS3 chat pads which I don't see too often and then all the consoles matching controllers. Onto the last shelf it starts off with the Neo Geo CD console there. Then we have a little shelf dedicated to Sonic the Hedgehog. Got the Sonic Mania statue there with some figures. We got Sonic 1, 2, and 3 in the back there. Really cool little statue. Then we got some Game Boy stuff here. I've got my Arctic Ice limited edition Game Boy Pocket there. A clear Game Boy Pocket. Sorry about the glare there. Then we have an original Game Boy complete box in the back there. A Donkey Kong Game & Watch right in the bottom there with a figure on it then the crystal red and crystal blue 2DS is complete in box an original blue DS right up front here tucked behind it's another original Game Boy complete in box and then on the side I have two different versions of the clear original Game Boy from the Play It Loud series we got the hard case version and a soft box version and for the very bottom of the last shelf we have my Atari XE console with the keyboard, the console, and the 410 program recorder. 
All right, that's it for the glass shelves. Now let's get on with the rest of the game room tour. What we're looking at here is the Blockbuster Pokemon Snap Station. Basically, you would go into Blockbuster and you could print your Pokemon Snap pictures from this little kiosk. If we look above the kiosk here, I have a cool brand new Pokemon Snap in store promo there, which I thought was very fitting. And then you see this Pokemon card set here. I don't collect Pokemon cards, but I did get this set because Arcanine is my favorite Pokemon. Then here we see the new Pokemon Snap game on Switch, a complete in box Pokemon Snap for N64, and then the Japanese version of Pokemon Snap for N64. And tucked right there is a Arcanine that I printed off from the Snap Station. Right in the middle here you see a Reshiram figure, and behind Reshiram you can see the different kinds of cards that you would use in the Pokemon Snap Station at Blockbuster. They are sitting on some Nintendo Power issues and a Pokemon Snap strategy guide. And then that's sitting on my Pokemon Pikachu VCR. Yes, this is a Pokemon VCR. It has little Pokeball buttons. It's super cool. Glad to have that in the collection. Something you really don't see anymore. Right there beside it, you can see a not for resale version of Pokemon Stadium. Then we have this really cool Jigglypuff. But this is actually a Bluetooth speaker. Yeah, I saw that and I thought that was super cool. Then here we can see a new Pokemon Snap little promo book there with an Ivysaur. And then Jigglypuff is sitting on this little Pokemon Snap book there. And then of course here again is the Pokemon Snap station. It's got lots of printer paper there. There's the controller. And then this is where you would put your card in. And then here I actually have a pre-order bonus for Pokemon Snap. Shout out to my friend Tony for getting me that. I got lots of paper and ink cartridges at the bottom. And then just beside the Snap Station is my Playmobil Ghostbusters Firehouse that my son likes to play with. So it's just there for easy access. Next up, beside the Snap Station, is my N64 kiosk. It's currently playing one of my favorite N64 games, Perfect Dark. I modified this kiosk when I got it and I put in a Japanese blue and clear N64 and I also added LED lights to the controllers. You can see here that it's two-toned and then I also added the LEDs to the console. It's currently running my EverDrive 64. Here's a Joanna Dark figure beside it. You can see some Mario Kart blue spike shells there. Then we got a Wario from Mario Kart 64 and a Dr. Mario Amiibo just tucked in the back there. Also I should note, I put in this True Flat CRT in here recently, got rid of the old round tube TV. In the bottom of the kiosk here I keep my Vectrex box, I also have a Famicom robot box there, a Game Gear and some multi-taps, and then I also keep my Steel Battalion in the bottom. This thing's complete in box, it's mint, it's a huge controller, it's a pain to set up, but it is a lot of fun. Definitely a cool piece in the collection for sure. On top of the kiosk is something very special. Is it this Bowser figure? No. Perhaps it's this Bowser amiibo? No. It is Bowser. It's the first four figures Bowser statue. That's right. I got a Bowser statue. This thing is massive, it's heavy, and it is beautiful. This is something that I've always wanted in the game collection. And as I mentioned before, selling my GameCube collection got me this house plus a little bit extra. And this was one thing that I wanted to get. I am an absolutely huge fan of Bowser. And this is the pinnacle of Bowser collectibles you can get. Nothing beats this. It's such an amazing piece. It's so well done. I completely love this thing. It is one of my favorite things in the game room now. I mentioned before that I was waiting for something to come in the mail before I did this game room tour. Well, guess what? It was this. I finally got it in the mail and now my game room truly feels complete. I'm just in awe about how amazing this Bowser is. Honestly, I could just gush about how amazing this Bowser is for the rest of the video, but let's not do that. Behind Bowser, you can see this Super Mario Bros. for Wii banner there. It's kind of tucked away, but it fills up some wall space. It's the same size as the one in the washroom as the Zelda one. It's a four foot. Neat little banner. 
In front of that you can kind of see my Umbreon card set there. Again, I don't collect cards, but I had to get that little set for Umbreon. This here is my main gaming station. This is my 4K 65 inch Samsung QLED TV. Again, I always wanted a modern up-to-date television and selling the GameCube set allowed me to do that. So I have this beautiful 4K TV that we do all the modern gaming on. It's a great centerpiece to the game room and modern consoles look absolutely great on it. On top of the shelf, I have quite a few things here, so let's look through them. Starting at the top here, you can see an EV poster in the very back wall there. And then we have this Super NES Donkey Kong set there. On top we have the Starlink Star Fox ship, an Iceman Funko Pop, a Mew Funko Pop, and this really neat Boo lamp. In front of the Donkey Kong set we have a World of Nintendo Bowser's Castle. Of course I had to get that. My son actually loves playing with this thing. It's a really cool toy. I'm glad to have that on display in the game room. We can see in the back there I also have a standard Super Nintendo complete in box just tucked away in the back. Then you can see my Super Smash Bros Ultimate Switch box there. And in front of him I have this Mr. Saturn. Just a big fan of Earthbound. That was a real cool gift from my wife. Then we got a Arcanine figure here, which just came out actually. I've never seen an Arcanine figure before, so I'm so happy that I finally have one. And then you can see here we have a Sora figure, a Tails, and a Dixie Kong. Three characters that I would have loved to get in Smash. I honestly don't think it's going to happen, so they'll always stand there to remind me of the three that never got in. Down in front here, I have a Pokemon card set for Luxray. Again, one of my favorite Pokemon, so I had to get a card set for him. Right behind here on the side, I have a Pikmin light here that lights up. And then I have this Pokemon Timeline poster, which goes from Red and Blue up to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Below that, I have this super cool Bowser Mario Kart figure. It has the little parachute on top. I thought that was really cool. Got that recently. And then just right there, I have a Bowser picture that my youngest son colored for me. Heading back up, I have this super cool light up Mewtwo statue. We found this at Toys R Us one time and I saw it and I just had to have it. It's super nice, super cool. I love how it lights up. The backdrop for the main gaming station is the six Fantastic N64 boxes. I think those colors are so awesome and those consoles are fun to collect for. So I wanted to display the boxes where they would get some appreciation. At the top here, you can see some different handhelds. I got the Smash Bros 3DSs, both red and blue, the Pokemon 3DS, the Pokeball 2DS, the Zelda Hylian Shield 2DS, and then another Platinum GBA. That's actually my childhood GBA that I got new. Down front and center of the main gaming station, I have these five statues holding games. A question I get asked a lot is, hey, what have you been playing or what have you beaten recently? Well, these five statues hold the games that I'm currently playing or I've recently beaten. Sonic here is holding Super Mario 3D World. I'm actually playing through that game with my two sons and my wife. We're always playing Smash Bros. Banjo's holding that. In the center here, you see Mario. He actually holds the game that I'm currently playing. I am playing Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon for the PS3. EDF! EDF! Such a fun, stupid game. Tails is holding Destroy All Humans remake for PS4. I recently beat that. That was a blast. And then Crash Bandicoot is holding Murdered Soul Suspect for the PS3. I've been playing a lot of PS3 stuff recently, actually. Right over here, you can see my Crypto statue. This came with the Destroy All Humans remake collector's edition. My wife got me this for Christmas. He's so big, so creepy but he's a great addition to the game room. Just look at those eyes. He's actually holding the Destroy All Humans original version for the original Xbox. Tucked behind there, I have this Fortnite little promo card that I got in the mail, which I did a video on. At the time when I got it, I had no idea what it was, so I just hung on to it. Behind Crypto, you can see my vinyl record for the Donkey Kong Country 2 soundtrack. 
I don't collect vinyl, but that's such an amazing soundtrack. I had to get that when I saw it. And then right there, you can see a random Venom figure. And then here's the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Collector's Edition with the Steel Case and Pro Controller. And then this is the European Collector's Edition of Smash Bros. Ultimate that came with a controller and the GameCube controller adapter. Moving down, we have my Crystal Pokeball there with Arcanine. Again, my favorite Pokemon. We have my modded SNES Classic there. Then a couple of Nintendo Switch controllers. This is my Samsung soundbar there for the main TV. Has wireless speakers for surround sound. Here's my Super Smash Bros. Ultimate Switch with the cool little dock. Here's my PS4 Pro, the Spider-Man edition with some controllers on charge. I use that PS4 strictly for VR. Speaking of, here's my VR version 2 there. Then I have a Xbox 360 E model there, which I use for gaming on this main TV. And then my custom ice blue cube there. Honestly, I don't play much cube on this TV because it just doesn't look good, even with those HDMI adapters. Here's my top loading super slim PS3 that I play on. My Battlefield Xbox One. Then I have my NES Classic Edition and the Genesis Mini, both modded. And then I have a region free Pioneer DVD player. And then beside that, I have my main PS4 Pro, which I play all my PS4 games on. Stepping back, we can get a full shot of my coffee table. I absolutely love this coffee table. My wife. And my two kids made all the pearl art in this coffee table. It's so cool. Everything in this coffee table has a lot of meaning to me. I really love the Mega Man bosses that my wife did for me recently. We got Dixie Kong in there, Shiny Umbreon. We got Missing No. We got Link and Zelda. We got the original Arcanine Sprite from Red and Blue. We got the Snow Brothers, Ice Climbers, Bucky O'Hare. Just awesome, awesome pearl art. I love this coffee table. Moving along, we have this original Donkey Kong stuffy here, hanging up. Then I have this really cool Atari 2600 ET hanger. This thing was used in stores back in the day. I actually got this one sealed. I cracked it open, put it in the game room. I thought it was a great addition to the game room. Right behind here, you can just see I have a Xbox light. And then there's my Xbox kiosk there. Before we get to that, you can see a Bowser Puppet, a Boo Puppet, a Lakitu Puppet, a Flying Pikmin Stuffy, and then this really cool Super Mario Odyssey Bowser Flag. That was a promo item from a, an EB Games, and I was lucky enough to get my hands on it. Up above, I had this kind of weird space. I didn't know what to do with it, so I put up some Game Boy Advance boxes. There's the Castlevania Double Pack. We got both Golden Suns there. Zelda, A Link to the Past, Zelda Minish Cap, River City Ransom, Iron Man, that's a hidden gem for sure on the GBA. We got Babar, Ice Climber, Bomberman Tourney. We got Mother 3, which is a fan made version there with box. It's English translated, so that's awesome. We got Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, Final Fantasy 1 and 2 Donna Souls, Mario Party Advance. We got Magical Quest with Mickey Mouse. I got a sealed copy of Donkey Kong King of Swing, sealed copy of Dr. Mario and Puzzle League, F-Zero, Yoshi Topsy Turvy, a sealed copy of Ultimate Spider-Man, Men in Black Kingdom Hearts, and Dodgeball and Paperboy and Rampage. Here we have my original Xbox kiosk. I recently did a video on this thing, so be sure to check that out if you want to see how I got it and where it started. Basically, this thing is awesome. It's the original Xbox kiosk with the Duke controllers. Has all the signage there, works great. I put in this new TV, cleaned it up, got it working. It's currently playing Marvel vs. Capcom 2. On top are my three mains from that game, Venom, Iceman, and Morrigan. Behind Morrigan, you can see this PS4 Pro in-store sign. At the 
bottom here we have some original Xbox demo discs as well as a complete in box original Xbox and tucked back there is a Soul Calibur Collector's Edition hidden away. Over on the side here we have a Tom Nook hanging out between these two kiosks and then here is one of two in-store seven foot Nintendo GameCube kiosks. This is the blue version. This is the one that I got by trading my sealed QVC Maximum Carnage set. I did a video on that if you want to know more about it, so be sure to check that out. It's currently playing an in-store GameCube kiosk demo disc. This thing's in great condition. I cleaned it up. I had to replace a lot of the stuff like the lights. The marquee is still intact. It's just a great looking unit. I really love this one. This kiosk actually features Donkey Konga on it, Splinter Cell, Pandora Tomorrow, Pikmin 2, which is great, and Paper Mario 2, which eventually became Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door. I absolutely love how great these two kiosks look together. Despite being rivals back in the day, they just work really well together here. Heading over to the side here, I actually put this Paper Mario Thousand Year Door Bowser on the side. I thought it was pretty fitting for the kiosk, especially since I had Paper Mario 2 on it. Just taking a look here, you can see how great of condition it is. Right behind it here I have this Pokemon Snap in-store promo. It's a really cool little piece. We can see right at the top here, on the back of the kiosk, I have this Poliwhirl stuffy just chilling out. I've actually had that since I was a kid. And then I put my Panasonic Q box up there. Beside that, I have some more Mario Kart Hot Wheels. We got Bowser, Blue Yoshi, Wario, Waluigi, Dry Bones, and Lakitu. Now we have my complete North American GameCube set. As I mentioned before, I sold my entire GameCube collection, which gave me the opportunity to buy this house and many other things I've always wanted. But I managed to get the whole set back, which is crazy, I know. I've collected the North American GameCube set twice. I absolutely love the GameCube. I never would have sold my set if I didn't get such an incredible offer for it. So I knew I was going to get it back. Just at the top here before we dive in, I have some Nintendo promo VHS tapes up there. My cool GameCube sign. And then here, all in alphabetical order, is the entire set. I actually have them all in these protective cases as well. I used to pull them in and out all the time and it was scratching up the cases. So I invested in protectors and now this set is nice and safe and can be played without causing any issues. Jumping over to the other side, this is the other half all in alphabetical order in protective cases. We look at the very bottom and I keep a few of my extras and my variants, such as Mario Kart Double Dashes. I'm trying to build a full LAN party for that. At the top on this side, I actually have this placeholder. One problem I used to have was people would pull a game out and then they'd forget where it goes. So now this placeholder my son made me, you can just slip in and know where it is. Here we have the keyboard controller for the GameCube, which is pretty cool. It's complete in box. Up top, I just have some random backyard sports games sealed for the Game Boy Advance. Onto the centerpiece of the GameCube display, I put this little Toshiba CRT TV on top of the glass shelf. I wanted to give my GameCube collection a store display feel. Anybody can just throw games on a shelf. I wanted mine to stand out and be different. I put some figures on top of the TV and I run a GameCube kiosk demo disc on the CRT. Definitely makes it stand out and makes it an eye-catching display. In the glass shelf here, I have my Panasonic Q. This is the holy grail of GameCube collecting for me. This is one of my favorite things in the collection. And I now have the Game Boy Player with it, which is super awesome. Also have a broadband adapter there and the DVD remote. Below the Q, I have my Indigo GameCube with the matching LCD screen, which is great for GameCube on the go. Beside that, I have my custom modded Viper GameCube. I actually picked that up in a crazy lot a while ago. I can't believe what a deal that was. And then that's just the October 2001 demo disc that's playing on the Toshiba TV. And then there's an Olimar stuffy sitting there as well. 
down below, I have my Complete Box Pokemon XD GameCube bundle. I have the Pokemon XD strategy guide there, a Colosseum strategy guide on the other side. There's the not for resale version of the Pokemon XD. Then my holy grail of GameCube game collecting, the Metroid Prime Wind Waker combo. Such a cool piece, I love that thing. Right over here I have the Pokemon Coliseum pre-order Jirachi bonus set. And I have a Samus figure there. And then behind that is my childhood Platinum GameCube box. That's one of the things I did keep when I sold the collection. Finally, on the bottom shelf of this display, I have the Hori GBA Player controller, a complete in box Resident Evil 4 chainsaw controller, and then my custom Ice Blue Cube controller. And finally, to top off the GameCube corner is an official in-store GameCube mat. Moving along from GameCube, you can see my Final Fantasy VII Remake promo poster there. Hanging out at the top of the kiosk is my Jack the Pumpkin King in his Santa Claus outfit. And then, this is my PlayStation 4 in-store kiosk. This thing is super cool. It's another thing that I got locally for a great deal. Really happy to add it to the collection. Of course, needed some work, but I was able to get it together. It's currently playing my favorite PlayStation 4 game, Days Gone. You need to play that game. That's all I can say about it. Just play it. On to my other in-store 7-foot Nintendo GameCube kiosk. This is the red version. This is the one that I also picked up locally and got a really great deal on. In front of it, I have this little mushroom toadstool. My kids like to sit on this thing and play the kiosks. The red version kiosk features Chibi Robo, Naruto, and Sonic Riders. This one also needed a bit of work. I swapped out the consoles, cleaned it up, but overall this one's in great shape as well. It's actually in a little bit better shape than my blue one. On top I just keep a few of my GameCube kiosk demo discs there so I can swap them out if need be. I'm so fortunate and thankful that I have two in-store Nintendo GameCube kiosks. I searched for nearly a decade to get one, and here in 2021, I have two somehow. So, super thankful. Absolutely love my GameCube kiosks. Just want to quickly mention that I actually hooked them together. Yeah, together. So we can do LAN parties between the two kiosks. Mario Kart Double Dash LAN parties are a blast on the kiosks. Now we'll take a look at this wall beside the kiosk. At the very top here, I have a couple shelves. You can see my Halloween, my Friday the 13th, and my Nightmare on Elm Street Blu-ray sets. And yes, that's the super expensive, rare Halloween Blu-ray set. I actually got that at a garage sale for five bucks. I didn't pay the thousand dollars it's going for. Beside that, I have all my PS Vita games. I just kind of keep them up there beside my blue Vita, right up there on top of that shelf. And then, I love Days Gone, if you haven't noticed, I got a Days Gone promo poster in the back. You can see I have some PS3 stuff there, Last of Us Survival Edition, Tekken Hybrid, Injustice Collector's Edition, Game Informer issue of Days Gone, Bioshock Infinite Collector's Edition, the Anna Perina Collector set for PS4, I got the Steel Case for Last of Us 2, I got the Days Gone Collector's Edition, a Days Gone little countertop standee, my Walking Dead Edition, bundle for my PS Vita and then I have a signed picture from San Witwer which he was the voice of Deacon St. John in Days Gone and then just stacked up in there you can see some extra boxes there The Last of Us Part 2 Collector's Edition and Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake Collector's Editions taking a step back you can see this Days Gone little promo stuff I set up here and then this end of the shelf which has quite a bit of cool stuff on it this is a really cool little display that really catches your eye as you approach this end of the game room. The Days Gone promo stuff up here, actually put together. I just really love Days Gone and I think everyone should play it. This particular sign is actually 3D, so it's actually two pieces, so it really pops when you're looking at it. He's got these creepy little zombies on it. Down below that I have a few of my favorite collector's edition statues. This is Cassandra from Soul Calibur. She's reaching for the sky. This is the Deacon St. John Days Gone Collector's Edition 
statue. Here's Ellie from The Last of Us Part 2, Collector's Edition statue. And then Leon and Jill from Resident Evil 2 and 3 Remake Collector's Editions. I actually put them both on the stand together. I thought they looked really awesome together. Just standing shoulder to shoulder like that. Down below, this is my PlayStation 3 3D TV. This thing is beautiful. I love this thing. It's currently playing Earth Defense Force Insect Armageddon. I just threw it in there because I'm currently playing through that and it's a lot of fun. Hooked up to this PlayStation 3D TV is my backwards compatible PS3. This is the one, yes, that I gotten a lot recently. I cleaned it up and got it together. It's super awesome. I love this thing. What a great local cheap find. So shiny. Heading down to the bottom, we just see some controllers here. I got a pink and a gold one. I got this cool PlayStation Lite. It's sitting on top of my Street Fighter Cross Tekken fight stick. That's actually still sealed. And I got my PlayStation Vita there. I got a PlayStation 1 lamp. Got a PlayStation TV there. My PSP box. And then this is a PS4 controller clock, which is pretty cool. And then just some more controllers here for a charging station. And then here is my PlayStation TV hooked up to the 3D TV. And if you don't know, the PlayStation TV can actually play PlayStation Vita games on the big screen. And then there's a PlayStation 3 remote. Taking a look at the side of the shelf now, this is actually an official in-store PlayStation shelf. It's super cool, it's super heavy. This side, I keep a lot of my PlayStation 4 stuff on here. A lot of notable games sitting up front here. Obviously, Days Gone. Got stuff like the Resident Evils, Outlast. Got some Blair Witch, Kingdom Hearts, some horror games, Earth Defense Force, EDF, EDF. Got Back to the Future here, Injustice. I love that the Ninja Turtles are in that game. Friday the 13th. And speaking of Ninja Turtles, I still remember when I got this game for 18 bucks at EB Games. Yeah, it's worth a lot more than that. And Pine View Drive in the corner there. Heading downward, this stand actually locks. Yeah, it's really cool. So I keep a lot of my high-end PlayStation stuff locked up in this little section here. Quick note, this stand actually is from the PSP and the PS3 era. Heading down, let's take a look what's locked up here. We got Layers of Fear for PS4 sealed, Job Simulator for PS4 sealed. We got the Spider-Man 3 Collector's Edition. We got Spider-Man Edge of Time. We got Spider-Man Shattered Dimension. We got Spider-Man Web of Fire. We got Silent Hill Downpour, Deadly Premonition, Puppeteer. We got Splatterhouse, Africa, Folklore, 3D Dot Heroes, Super Underrated, Cross Edge featuring Morrigan. Lollipop, Chainsaw, and of course, Painkiller for the PS3. One heck of an expensive PS3 game that I got for 10 bucks in a Facebook Marketplace deal. Beside Painkiller, I got The Misadventures of Tron Bon on PS1, Castlevania Symphony of the Night, Air Gaze, and then I got Clock Tower 1 and 2, and then both Tombas. At the very bottom of this side of the shelf, it actually has some locking glass doors. They slide open. This is where I just keep a bunch of overflow PS3 games and stuff that I don't regularly play. A lot of great stuff in here, but mainly just tucked away storage. This shelf holds a lot of stuff. I really like it. And then this side, same thing. Slides open. Just got some more PS3 games here. Easy to grab, look through and see what I got. Heading over to the other side, I just wanted to quickly note that it actually has the PlayStation logo etched into the glass on this. I thought that was super cool. This side, I keep all my PSP and my PlayStation 4 VR games. Some notable PlayStation portable stuff here like Need for Speed Underground Rivals. Got the Darkstalkers there. Love that game. Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. Had a lot of fun with that as a kid. Got Mega Man Powered Up, Ghostbusters, Silent Hill, and then some actual UMD movies. You guys remember that when it was just movies, not actual games? And then onto the PS4 VR stuff, Home Sweet Home, one of the most terrifying games 
I've ever played. Got paranormal activity there. Walking Dead. The Star Wars VR game is super cool. I love that. Got Disaster Report 4. That's a good one. More Walking Dead. Astro Bot's a great one. And Tetris Effect, one of my favorite VR games. So fun to play. Now onto the locking section on this side of the PlayStation stand. I keep a lot of my high-end PS2 stuff in here. Right there you can see we have Echo Knight. We have the Ultimate Spider-Man Collector's Edition. We got Ghost Hunter. We got Clock Tower 3. All three Fatal Frames. All three Silent Hills. We got the Horror Trifecta, Haunting Ground, Rule of Rose, and Kuon. And Rule of Rose definitely has been outpriced by Kuon. Here we got some high-end PSP stuff. We got Castlevania, Hammer and Hero, and Silent Hill Shattered Memories. I love that game. And then just over a little bit more, we got the Collector's Edition for Spyro. And then I have a sealed copy of these Disney 3-pack there. Heading down to the glass section on this side is where I keep all my PS2 games. It slides open and it's quick easy access for any of my PS2 games. A lot of notable titles in here. We got like the Grand Theft Autos, we got Ninja Turtles, a lot of the wrestling games like Smackdown Here Comes the Pain, great game. Resident Evil Collector's Edition set there. Got stuff like uh, Mr. Mosquito, definitely shout out to that, I love that game. Got Ghostbusters. Just real good stuff, like uh, that Disaster Report. I remember when I got that in a bargain bin at Walmart, and I had a lot of fun with that. It's an earthquake survival game. So yeah, great place to store PlayStation games on this stand. Love this thing, it's huge, it's heavy. It was actually a big, giant pain in the rear to get it in the basement. I joke around and say if I ever have to move again, this stand is staying here. So that's enough about the PlayStation shelf. Right down here, you can see my NES controller chest. This is the one that my wife made me a few years ago now. I just love how I can keep my NES games in it. They're so organized and nice. She did such a great job on this that the buttons actually protrude up. It's a nice little detail. One thing I just don't like seeing in game rooms is NES carts just sitting on shelves. I just don't like the look of it, so this chest was perfect to keep it clean, organized, and hidden away. We've got a lot of good stuff in here. All the staples are in here. Some classic NES games that everybody loves. Stuff like River City Grantham. That one is really cool. I love that game. You know, uh, Ghostbusters 2. Star Tropics. All the Double Dragons. Tiny Toons. Cool Cool Land. Just a, a really great collection of NES games that I really enjoy. Before we go further in the game room, I thought now would be a good time to show the Amiibo wall. I recently did a video on the Amiibo wall as well, so go ahead and check that out if you want to see it in detail. This, first off, is my in-store Amiibo demo kiosk. I absolutely love this thing. It's something I always wanted. I'd see it at Toys R Us wanting it so badly, and I ended up getting this one for free. Yeah, for free. I tried to get one at my local retro video game store. They wanted $1,500 for it. I hummed and hawed. I was gonna trade some stuff in, I passed. Well, I'm glad I did because someone got a hold of me and they were gracious enough to give it to me for free. Didn't cost them anything. They knew I was such an amiibo collector and I had such an amazing collection. So big shout out to you for hooking me up with this for no charge at all. It's in a good home. The top here in the back I have an in-store amiibo sign there. I kept the original amiibos that came with it on top and I put my own amiibos in that I wanted. Ness, Bowser, Pikmin, Isabelle and Krom. What's cool is this is actually a touch screen so you can actually run through it. Pick the amiibo you want. Let's see here. Let's go Waluigi. And then the games that they're compatible with, at the time, obviously. Mario Maker. And tells you what's console. It could be either Wii U or 3DS. And then it plays a little video for you. Amiibo. 
Amiibo can be used with the original Super Mario Brothers themed courses. Super While cool. While you're making a course, tap a compatible Amiibo to drop in a new mystery. So over here is the complete Mario Super Smash Bros. Amiibo set. These are all the ones released currently up to date at the filming of this video. The most recently released ones are Banjo, Terry, and Byleth. Now these are all first print North American releases. There's a sealed set and an open set. I love to train these amiibos and I love the boxes so that kind of snowballed into having this crazy amiibo collection. It's definitely eye-catching when you walk in the game room. I do have this sign right here. Hopefully there's enough room for the DLC amiibos. From my calculations, it should be enough. So we'll see. I just want to quickly mention my couch here. My last game room, I had like zero seating for friends. It was just a two-seater. So something I wanted for this ultimate game room was a nice big couch so all my friends have a place to sit. On the couch here, I just have this cool Bowser shell. The owner of the retro video game store here locally actually gave my son this E.T. So he likes to cuddle with E.T. down in the game room when he's hanging out. Then we just got some other random stuff here, including the crypto stuffy backpack. That thing's so weird. Underneath the Amiibo kiosk, I have this little old McDonald's kiosk. This was actually a GameCube kiosk, but I converted it to a PS2 kiosk because I don't have a PS2 kiosk. And I don't really think I needed three GameCube kiosks. I cleaned it up and mounted it to the wall. It works really well. Just grab a controller here and pick up and play. I added a second controller here on this side as well. Lots of cord there, so it's easy to just stand here and give it a play. In front, we have this little Wii stand. I actually scored this for 30 bucks with a couple of Wii bowling balls. It's a nice little addition to the game room. It holds a lot of games, a lot of Wii motes, so you can just come over and grab a Wii mote off it, which is nice. A lot of cool games in here, a lot of staples. I just want to give a quick shout out to a couple of games in here, like Tatsunoko vs. Capcom. That one's super fun, and We Love Golf actually has Morgan in it, which is cool. But yeah, a lot of great Wii games here. Some of my favorites I just keep on it. And there's an extra Wii console at the bottom. And if we take a look over to the side here, you can see the bowling balls it came with. Yes, full-size Wii bowling balls. How random. Tucked away behind the little Wii shelf and under the PS2 kiosk is this little in-store promo for Super Mario Odyssey. To the left of the PlayStation 2 kiosk, I call this my PlayStation Station. It's basically just a little area dedicated to the PS1. Holds all my favorite games and stuff like that. I added this TV to the PlayStation Station. It's currently playing Silent Hill, my favorite PS1 game. It's mounted to the wall, so you can actually pull this TV out and play from all sorts of different angles. I thought that was a great addition. So if you want to play some two-player, you can, or you can just stand up here and do some one-player. Let's head down to the bottom and take a look at some of the games. I like how you can have some of the cover arts facing out on this shelf. A lot of my favorites are standing out here. You can see we have Sheep here, Disney's Hercules, I got Punky Skunk in the back, Buster Bros, and Reboot tucked away. A lot of great games there. Then we have Skull Monkeys and The Lost World Jurassic Park. Then we got Spider-Man 1 and 2. I love those games. Then we got Strider 2 and Space Jam. I got Strider 2 in the wild for 10 bucks. What a great game. I love that one. It's so fun. Then Mortal Kombat Trilogy. My favorite Mortal Kombat ever. And Darkstalkers 3 featuring Morgan. And then of course Final Fantasy 7 and 8. And then here's the PS1 that is hooked up to the TV. And then I have this here. It basically just keeps an eye on the humidity in the game room. One little tip for everybody is watch your humidity in the game room, especially with collections of this size. Up here beside the PlayStation Station TV, I actually have a sealed R zone. I don't know why I have it, but I do. And then a lot of people look at this little section here that come over like, what's with these NES boxes here? Well, the reasoning these are here these are my earliest childhood gaming memories ever like I think back 
to the very first games I ever played, and it's these games. Aside from the Mario Brothers games, of course. But we got Yonoid up here, we got Crazy Creatures, which that game single-handedly started my love for puzzle games. We got Narc, I played that a lot with my brothers. A Nightmare on Elm Street, that game just terrified me as a kid. Time Lord, that's one of the few games I actually beat as a kid on my own. Uh, I really enjoyed that game. Ghostbusters 2, I like it. Chippendale was the one that we played together with my brothers and my sister. Kiri Craze is fun. Clash of Demon Head, that's a game that I remember playing as a kid, but I didn't know the name of it until I saw it in a YouTube video. That game was hard as heck. I actually never beat it as a kid, but I've beaten it as an adult now. River City Ransom, that's one I played with my brothers a lot, as well as North and South. And then one I played a lot with my mom was The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Beside the PlayStation stand, I have this bookshelf. It has six of my Game Boy Color variants here. We got the Berry, the Dandelion, the Grape, the Teal, the Atomic Purple, and the Lime Green. Now this is no normal Lime Green. This is one I got as a teenager. It actually came bundled with Pokemon Crystal. Pokemon Crystal's price is absolutely insane right now. I don't even know what kind of value this thing has. I'm just glad I kept it over the years. To the right of that, I have my Action 52 for the NES, and then some 7-Eleven Canadian exclusive Zelda Link's Awakening Slurpee Cups. Moving down the shelf here, you can see a Pokemon Stadium 2 Nintendo Power poster, and then I got a Lemmings poster there from Nintendo Power, and then I got this cool Animal Crossing New Horizons in-store little sign. It's actually double-sided. Cool little addition to the game room. Onto the Zelda shelf. This just has a variety of different Zelda related items from the series. I have a bunch of Breath of the Wild amiibo there, a Link's Awakening amiibo, I've got a Majora's Mask amiibo. You can see I got my Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword big box there with the gold Wiimote. I got the Majora's Mask 3DS. more amiibo there. I got the Zelda Wind Waker Wii U Collector's Edition with the Ganondorf. There's my 25th anniversary Zelda Ocarina of Time 3DS. I got a Zelda DS Lite there, complete in box. Got a Link and a Pona figure there, another Zelda controller. Then here is my Light Up Majora's Mask first four figure statue. It's super cool. What great detail. It's kind of nice because when the lights are out, you can just look over and you got the creepy eye staring at you in the night. Here's my original Game & Watch Zelda complete in box. And then this is the Prima Zelda Collector's Edition Strategy Guide chest. And then moving on from the Zelda shelf, I have my Minecraft shelf. I'm not really into Minecraft that much. I don't mind playing creative with my kids, but my kids love it. And Minecraft is a huge series. So I had to pay some respect to it in the game room. Over there you can see my Creeper controller. Got the Minecraft Xbox One S, the Minecraft Pig controller, and of course Minecraft, the Xbox 360 edition. This little section here is my wrestling section. I actually used to be a huge wrestling fan. Not so much anymore, but I did grow up with the Attitude Era and later on in life watched the Ruthless Aggression Era. And I really enjoyed it. I can't stand wrestling now, but I love to go back and watch some classic wrestling. I would usually like to display the wrestling section here on my little Sony Trinitron. I call this my Mini Trini. I have a lot of different DVDs here. Stuff like the Royal Rumbles I always enjoyed watching those as a kid. And got the WrestleMania collection, SummerSlam collection. Got a few figures here of my favorite wrestlers like X-Pac and Bret Hart. Undertaker there in the back. I have a lot of really great wrestling DVDs here. One that I actually want to point out is Backlash 2004. That's the one with Chris Benoit on the cover. I actually was at this wrestling event. I was ringside. So if you watch that DVD, you can actually see me and my wrestling sign right there at ringside. Down here, just some more notable stuff. Best of King of the Ring. Got some Bret Hart DVDs, NWO DVDs. We got the Invasion DVD, Monday Night Wars, Rise and Fall WCW, Best of Raw, a lot of great stuff. In the middle here, I have my favorite wrestlers of all time, the Hardy Boys. I got some open ones there, and then I have this two extreme sealed set with Lita. 
It's a really cool set from the WWF days. I just didn't want to open it. Up here, I just want to mention the Attitude Era DVDs, the DX DVD, and the Ladder Match Collection DVDs. Bottom shelf here, I just keep a bunch of extra collector's editions that I don't have room to display. I do got to shout out the Outlast briefcase edition, but honestly, I got to stop ordering these things. I know Limited Run puts them out and I order them, but then you get to the point where you get so many, you just throw them on a shelf. Moving on, beside that shelf, I have some figures. I got a Lemmings figure, Tails figure, Knuckles figure, Banjo and Kazooie figure, and a Conker figure. Above the doorway here, I have Mario Advance 1, 2, 3, and 4, all complete in box. And then here, I put LAN Party because we love to have LAN parties in the retro room. Here we have an old school Donkey Kong stuffy hanging out there. And then I have this shelf here. It's packed full of goodies. We'll start at the bottom. The bottom shelf here, I have a lot of my favorite childhood TV shows. We got stuff like Power Rangers, Family Matters, Boy Meets World, The Flintstones, a few gaming shows here like the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, The Zelda Show, Mega Man Show. I've got the original Pokemon series in there. I've got Saved by the Bell and even Degrassi. And I'm pretty sure you have to be Canadian to like Degrassi. Moving up to this shelf is more of my favorite shows from when I was a kid. We got Unsolved Mysteries. That opening theme terrified me as a kid, but I really enjoyed it. We got the complete series of Goosebumps there, one of my favorite shows. One of my other favorite shows, Are You Afraid of the Dark? And then I also love the TV series of Home Improvement. A lot of great shows here. Definitely Home Improvement and Are You Afraid of the Dark are some of my favorites. I also got to give a shout out to Quantum Leap. My mom got me into that show as a kid. It's about time traveling. It's a great series. You should check it out. And then one last thing I want to shout out is The Secret World of Alex Mack. That's kind of a hidden gem show from the 90s. I really enjoyed it. I love that show. Next shelf, Nostalgia Hits Full Gear. This is the entire set of the original Goosebumps books from issues 1 to 62. I loved the Goosebumps books as a kid. I used to get them from the Scholastic Book Fair. Really great series. I got rid of my books a long time ago and I'm happy that I was able to get the series back. Really, really love these books. My oldest son likes reading them now, so it's great that I can keep the Goosebumps books alive. This one here is just a cool little big box set with a few issues. And then I got some of the Choose Your Own Adventure books here. Just looking through these covers, just hits me right in the nostalgia. Moving away from the Goosebumps up to my Nintendo DS shelf. This is where I keep a lot of my notable and favorite DS games. In front here we have the Buzz Lightyear DS holder and charger. I did a video on this if you want to check it out. It's on my channel. Here's my loose Dialga and Palkia DS Lite. Such a beautiful DS Lite. Here's all the games. Got a lot of notable stuff in here. I love the DS. A lot of great titles. Biker Mice from Mars, that's a good one. The Castlevania games. Diddy Kong Racing. Final Fantasies are really good. Got to give a shout out to Mario Party. Got the Kirby series there. Um, the Pokemon games, obviously. Tornado, that's a good one. Simpsons is decent. Spider-Man games are pretty good. Super Princess Peach. I actually did a video on my DS collection if you want to check it out. On to the 3DS section. First thing you'll notice is this Pikachu and Pokeball holder. It's actually a DS charger, but I use it to display the 3DS game that I'm currently playing, which is Hey Pikmin. It's not a traditional Pikmin game, but it's still pretty fun. Some notable stuff here. I got to give a shout out to Project Cross Zone on 3DS, a really great crossover strategy game. It's got a lot of cool characters. These are all in alphabetical order. Some notable stuff like Mario games, obviously Zelda, Luigi's Mansion. Got a Chibi Robo amiibo there. Mario games there. Jaws is pretty cool. More stuff here. Pokemon games, Resident Evil, Star Fox. Some pretty good stuff. Xenoblade. I love the 3DS. A lot of great games for it. Top of the shelf now, I have some random Yoshis here, and then I have a few collector's editions. I got the Power Rangers Battle for the Grid there, that's a really cool collector set. 
got Hollow Knight Collector's Edition. I got my custom female Villadru amiibo that I made, a blue yarn Yoshi. Got the Pokemon Sword and Shield 2 pack with the gold seal case. And then shout out to my friend Tony for getting me onto No Straight Roads. That's the collector's edition for the Switch. Let's go Eevee and Pikachu big boxes. I got Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer big box there, sealed for the 3DS. Then I have the Bully Locker Edition. This is a pretty rare PS2 collector set. It actually comes with a dodgeball. Yeah, it's a really cool set. Now, speaking of lockers, I actually have this Nintendo DS locker here right beside Bully. I picked this up locally. I thought it was so random, but yeah, it's a Nintendo DS locker. I keep a lot of my sealed and higher end stuff in this locker just because it's a locker. Got the Game & Watch collections that are sealed. I got the Little Red Riding Hood Zombie BBQ sealed there. I got Ultimate Mortal Kombat sealed there. Dementium and Dementium 2. I absolutely love those games. They're so good. Survival horror games on the DS. They're not sealed. Moon's another great one. Chrono Trigger. Then Luigi's Mansion Farm Warriors. Wizard of Oz. And some Japanese Tingle games. Followed up with a couple more Animal Crossing Amiibo. And on top of the locker, just got a gold Donkey Kong Amiibo there. Real quick over here, I have for the GameCom a sealed copy of Mortal Kombat Trilogy and Resident Evil 2. Then I have this Goosebumps Collector's Pog set. I actually got this set from a Scholastic Book Fair when I was a kid and I found this one still sealed later on in life at a garage sale or something. I can't remember where but I picked that up because that is super nostalgic for me. And I actually still have my original Goosebumps keychains there from Night of the Living Dummy and One Day at Horrorland. So I thought they were good there. Thought I have this really cool Ghostbusters 2 like movie store kind of promo sign it's totally 90s and I also have a Mario Bros 3 one as well that moves as you move next up beside the locker there I have this shelf I put a welcome to Silent Hill town sign on it Silent Hill again is such an important game to me as it started my love for horror games so I had to pay a little tribute in the game room there top of the shelf I have a Playmobil Ghostbusters car and the Back to the Future DeLorean. Beside that I have a cool little Super Mario Bros picture there. Then I have Donkey Kong Land 1, 2, and 3 on Game Boy Complete and then Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, and 3 on Game Boy Advance Complete. Here I have some Marvel vs. Capcom figures. These have such great box art. When I found out these existed I wanted to get a few that I really like. The top one here is Mega Man vs. the War Machine. Super shiny cool armor on these guys. Below that I have Captain America and yes Morrigan. This is the one I wanted the most. Like you rarely see Morrigan stuff so that was super cool. And then of course Venom vs Captain Commando. Another one I had to get. Super cool. Love those. Under that I have this Mario Kart Hot Wheels 4 pack. Bowser was in there with Mario and Luigi and a Black Yoshi. And then just randomly I have this robotic Spider-Man figure from the 90s. I had that figure loose as a kid. I found that at a pawn shop, so I picked it up. Over here in the middle, I have this Super Smash Bros. Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee promo cube. Also has Super Mario Party on it. Shout out to my wife for grabbing that. And then I got a Pikmin 3 Deluxe promo cube. Super cool. Got a Luigi stuffy there and a Mario stuffy here. Then up here I have a nostalgic original X-Men Iceman figure, another Iceman figure, and then a re-release of an Iceman figure. Iceman was my nickname as a kid, so I uh, really like those cool little figures. Going down I have a sealed Kingdom Hearts figure set of Donald and Goofy, and then I also have Mickey, Axel, and a Shadow down there. Real quick over here I have some Walking Dead Telltale figures. Here's Clementine in blood, and then we also have Lee Everett in blood, and then we have Clementine clean, and then a Lee Everett clean. I love Telltale Walking Dead, glad I could represent that series in the game room with those figures. Finally for over here, 
one of my favorite things in the game room and my wife got me this as well this is a huge in-store super smash bros ultimate standee this thing is beautiful i love smash ultimate and this is such a great addition to the game room it's actually double-sided i just prefer this side seeing cloud mario mega man and sonic all in the same game you know when i was a kid that would never have happened like you would think that was just a, a pipe dream now for something special this here is my very own personal video store i've always wanted to build something like this in a previous game room i just never had the space but with this new house it's a reality this is my ultimate dream game room so i'm very happy i was able to make this possible as we head into the video store, we look to the roof and you'll see this Steven Seagal hard to kill movie poster. Why is that here? Well, like I mentioned before, everything in this game room has a purpose or a meaning to me. And Steven Seagal was my mom's favorite actor when we were kids and she loved all his movies. So this poster is a tribute to my mother and how much she loves Steven Seagal. Plus, it wouldn't be a video store without some movie posters, right? As we look over to the side here, we see this shelf. We also see this NES controller mat that is a fuzz magnet. But back to the shelf. This shelf has a lot of goodies. Starting at the top, we can see Ralph here playing a Fix-It Felix arcade. I thought that was pretty cool. Got some random figures here a couple Soras a childhood Iceman figure we got some Ghostbuster stuff here we got this really cool E.T. bobblehead which I used to show on off in some older videos then we got some Venom stuff here again Venom's my favorite comic book character so definitely got to show him love in the game room got the Venom Blu-ray collector set there here's some old school Maximum Carnage and Venom figures this here is a Stealth Venom action figure. I actually had this as a kid. I used to call him Clear Venom. And then here's the black version of the Stealth Venom. And then I recently found this Venom at Toys R Us. Picked that up. And then I got this Disney Infinity Venom at a bargain bin kind of store there. So I picked that up as well. Over to the top of the shelf here. We are looking at my entire... Nintendo Power magazine set, all 285 issues. This was a set I wanted to collect for quite a while, and I was able to finish it a couple years ago, and it's definitely a really cool set, and I really enjoy it. I did have it set up in my old game room, but it was kind of hard to access. I'm glad here now you can just walk up, pull a magazine out, and give it a read. Way more convenient. This set deserves to be read. One thing I like on... The Nintendo Power sets too is some of the spines make pictures. I thought that was a really cool touch. It's also neat that you can kind of tell which error you have there. Like there's the GameCube error there. Then you got the N64 and then the NES and Super NES. One thing I want to point out quick here is the Super Mario Adventures. This is actually a modern book that I recently got. And it has all of the Nintendo Power Mario comics all in one. Super cool little book. Me and my son are reading through this right now. Real quick, I just wanted to show, I have a bunch of these Nintendo Power cards. Used to be able to get these in some of the issues. I just got a stack from when I was younger. I just kept them. They're kind of cool and nostalgic to look at. Whole bunch of different ones here. I didn't punch these out of my current set. These are just ones I've had over the years. Working our way down the shelf, I have other different magazines here. For instance, this is the almost full set of the GMR magazines. This is a GameStop slash EB Games magazine. I'm only missing two issues in this, but it's a pretty decent magazine. Moving over here, you can see I got some Zelda magazines and strategy guides here. And then I got a bunch of just kind of random stuff in here. Like there's an how to win it. E.T. for the 2600. Like I said, just some really random stuff. Here's some unpunched Nintendo Power cards like we were just talking about. And some like promo flyers here. It's cool just to look back at all that stuff. 
going down further i got some more strategy guides one thing i want to shout out is both left for dead one and two strategy guides that's really cool and then we got some more strategy guides here some neat stuff there's a, a good one here top secret passwords for the nes pokemon ones in there mario party 5 for gamecube some xbox stuff there keep going down i actually have some PlayStation magazines here as well the official PlayStation magazine some next generation magazines and then some EGM tips and tricks Just a lot of really cool gaming magazines Nothing's quite as cool as picking up an old gaming magazine and reading through it. I miss those days So on to the video store side of this I built these shelves here and this is basically what you would look at if you rented from a video store. You'd have a selection of games and movies. It's really just so nostalgic standing here and looking at these. It really does take you back to a Friday night at Blockbuster or a mom and pop video rental store trying to pick a movie. Me personally, I remember these Permastruck cases, looking through them and trying to pick a game to play for the weekend. It was cool because you could open it up and it actually have the instruction manual printed on the inside of the case. Those cases are just so nostalgic, I'd love to get more. They also had these kind of cases where they'd cut open the box, and then you have the classic blockbuster cases as well. I added these little things on the shelves like weekly rental, video games, new releases, now playing, kids movies, and of course, please be kind, rewind. Oh, and the two-day rental sign there as well. A lot of the old video stores, especially the mom and pop ones, would have signs like that. Something that I remember doing too is walking up and picking up a movie case like this, reading the back, and trying to decide if you wanted it. And if I wanted to rent Ace Ventura, you'd grab the tape and you'd take it to the counter. I'd like to get more of those cases to kind of fill up the rest of the shelf because that's the true authentic experience. But for now, this is what I've got going on. Some notable movies here to shout out. Stuff like Home Alone you've seen there. And, you know, Kindergarten Cop, Leprechaun, Little Giants, Mighty Ducks. Got some wrestling tapes, Ninja Turtles. You know, lots of classic staples of the 80s and 90s. Stuff that you would see in your average movie rental store. Even some horror stuff. Actually, like this one here too cartoon all-stars to the rescue i actually uploaded that entire movie to the channel if you ever want to watch it it's a anti-drug mcdonald's movie yeah how random but super cool i remember it's got elf in it it's got bugs bunny alvin the chipmunks winnie the pooh smurfs it's like a crossover movie some other notable stuff like jurassic park there and land before time men in black just classic movies that we all grew up and loved Roger Rabbit there. I just want to say WrestleMania 17 is my favorite WrestleMania, by the way. Got the Star Wars. And hey, it wouldn't be a video store without Robocop, right? Angels in the Outfield. Free Willy. I really like Jetstones. Meet the Flintstones. And then Pokemon. And oh, yeah, I got Space Jam. And it actually still has the little coin in it, too, which is super cool. The bottom of the shelves here, I have a classic retro Mario Kart 64 calendar poster and then a Donkey Kong calendar poster for 1996. I just want to say standing here looking at these shelves really takes me back to standing there on a Friday night at the video rental store trying to pick a movie or game. It's just a really great addition to the game room. Moving on from there. I just have this really cool Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie poster. This is a super nostalgic movie poster for me. And then I got a Home Alone movie poster there. Up above here, you can see I have some more video rental stuff. Do you remember going in a video rental store and them having movies on demo? Well, this was a key thing that I wanted to put in this video store. So I got a CRT with a VCR and you can just pop in a VHS tape and let it run. It totally adds to the feel of being in an old video store. Right now I just got the original Ninja Turtles playing here on this CRT. Over to the side here I do have some staff picks as well. 
You used to see that in some of the video rental stores. Got like Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, Bible Goes West. Got Beetlejuice there. And then here's some hot picks. The original Ninja Turtles, Edward Scissorhands, and Dangerous Minds. Down below, it wouldn't be a video store without a VHS tape rewinder. This thing works great and is an absolute must. This little sign right here, I made this board so I could keep track of what's being lent out or rented out to my friends. With a collection like this, I really want to share it with people. So I just put their name down here and what they borrowed and which day and if it's been returned. So it helps me keep track of what's being lent out. And no, I don't actually charge my friends to borrow or rent things. It's just, uh, this video store is just for fun. Down here you can see I got a couple more posters. There's a Nintendo Power poster, which is cool because all those characters end up getting in Smash. And then here, to add to the feel, I got a notice, employees only beyond this point, which that door just leads to my boring laundry room, but I thought it was a nice touch. Up above here, Ghostbusters car, and then my sealed NECA Ninja Turtles. I thought they were cool to add into the video store area. And then, swinging around here, we have, right beside the demo TV here, it's season 5 of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon. It comes in a pizza box. I thought that was really cool. Got that at the thrift store. And then we have one of my favorite movies, Back to the Future 2 movie poster. Here's some original Power Rangers. These ones have the transforming heads. Here's a sealed Raphael and Casey Jones NECA figure. And then my wife got me this. It's a Be Kind Rewind Blockbuster ticket sign. Super cool. Right here I have a Spider-Man and Carnage Nintendo Power poster. And then over here is my other Raphael opened. And then this is the four pack of the Baby Ninja Turtles from the NECA series. I have these two acrylic cases here. This one I keep some handheld stuff in. Here's my Pearl White PSP Go. Then I have my original Platinum Silver Game Boy Advance SP. That is very sentimental to me as I've had that since launch. And then I have a modified blue one here with a 101 screen. In the back I have a Double Dragon handheld Tiger game. That was from my childhood. Then I got a Game Gear tucked away in the back. Also have a Power Rangers Tiger handheld there. Those are awful. Here's the beautiful New Galaxy 3DS XL. I got a Luigi's Mansion 3DS there. It's a nice midnight blue color. Then I got a Neo Geo Pocket Color there. Here's some loose handhelds. I got a Donkey Kong Game & Watch, my Nokia N-Gage, my Famicom Game Boy Micro, my Gizmondo, which is a really rare console, and then my Lynx version 2. At the very bottom here I have a blue PSP there, and then a Darth Vader PSP. My Sega Nomad in the back there, so it's kind of hard to see. And then I have a Mario Bros. Game & Watch, and then the Mario Bros. Game & Watch, the new re-release. And then this little unit here, it's a 3 Game Changer Game Boy Advance SP holder. It basically puts 3 games in, it's like a CD changer, but for your Game Boy games. Really unique little piece there. On the side here I have some wrestling VHS tapes. Again, I used to love wrestling, so that's cool to have some of those. And then this really weird thing I found in the thrift store. It's a two-pack VHS for Jim Carrey. It's got the mask and Dumb and Dumber in it. Onto this acrylic case here, I keep a lot of my high-end games. I got some NES stuff in here like Darkwing Duck, Stack Up, Toxic Crusaders. Got Joker there and Metal Storm on NES. And I got Snow Bros here. For anyone that knows me, that's a super nostalgic game for me. Me and my mom played that a lot. One of my favorite NES games. Then here I got Bucky O'Hare. Then I got Gargoyles Quest 2, Mega Man 1, 3, 4, 5, and 6. You'll see Mega Man 2 somewhere else in this tour. And then this thing here. This is my childhood rented copy of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. I used to rent this all the time, week in, week out, from my local mom and pop rental store. Basically when they went out of business, I kept this like a bad boy. But I more than enough paid for it for how much I rented it. All that label wear is pretty much from me. It's so cool to actually have 
a game that I rented as a kid in my own personal rental store now. Next shelf down, I have some Genesis stuff here. You can see I got Streets of Rage 3 in the back. We got Haunting featuring Polterguy, Action 52, and Truxton. We got Michael Jackson's Moonwalker there and Ghostbusters up front. Here we have Biker Mice from Mars on Super Nintendo and SOS on Super Nintendo, which I used to call the Titanic game. Real quick on the side, here's a sealed ET VHS and then some Pokemon. VHS, then some N64 stuff here, both versions of Majora's Mask. We got the Pokemon Stadium 2 there, and then the Gold Collector's Edition of Ocarina of Time. Then I got Bomberman 64, the second attack there, and Conker's Bad Fur Day in the back. Finally, down below in this case, I have Super 3D Noah's Ark. Then I got Gunstar Heroes there. On the side, that's Castlevania Dracula X, a little tough to see, but it's in there. And then over here we have Mega Man 7, we got Demon's Crest and Ghoul Patrol, Castlevania Bloodlines, and then my rarest Super Nintendo game, Pocky and Rocky 2. Over here, just underneath the VHS rewinder, I have this shelf where I just keep some extra VHS tapes. I just got to give a loser a shout out there. It's a kind of a hidden gem movie as well I really like from the 2000s. Some of the notable stuff down here, we got Twister in there, the Scream movies, we got The Craft, Fern Gully, Flintstones, some really good classic VHS tapes. And then finally over here, I have some of my favorite movies on DVD, just tucked away here for easy access. A little bit of everything, got some horror stuff in there, like Dawn of the Dead, you can see we got the Fast and Furious movies, Friday the 13th there, Ghost Dad, that's a good one. We got the Ninja Turtle Space Jam. We got uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street, all three Mighty Ducks. We got Hercules, the Halloween movies, Holes, Toy Story. We got the classic cartoons down here. We got Gargoyles. We got the Spider-Man '94, the original X-Men cartoons, Darkwing Duck, Tailspin, Chippendale, Ducktales, Dinosaurs, Tiny Toon Adventures, Pinky and the Brain, Animaniacs, and even the first couple of seasons of Survivor there, which I used to love that show before it got out of control. Got stuff like Blossom in there, Reboot, just some really cool stuff. Max Headroom, that's a, a classic show there. Ghostbusters, Back to the Future, Adam's Family. Well, that's pretty much it for the video store section of the game room. Again, Super happy that I was able to build something like this in my ultimate dream game room. Now it's time to head on to the final part of the game room. The Retro Room. The entrance of the Retro Room, you're greeted with this Pokemon Red and Blue Home Sweet Home Mat. Which is quite fitting as this is one of my favorite parts of the game room. Looking ahead here, you can see my Super Mario RPG Nintendo Power poster. And then right here on the right, this is my Zippo display case. This thing works great for Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. I picked this up a few years ago now, and it's just such an eye catcher for any game room. I keep a lot of my high-end and notable games in here, as well as some of my favorite childhoods. You can see Amazing Tater there, Spuds, we got Snow Bros, the Five Mega Mans, Kid Dracula, Got the Castlevanias there, we got Wendy Every Which Way, the Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 combo pack there, we got Metal Gear Hidden Away, we got some childhood games in there, all my Pokemon cards there, we got the Zelda games there, we got some Wario stuff, lots of GBA goodies here, more Castlevanias, the Castlevania double pack, some Kirby games, some Mickey Mouse games. Back around here again, you can see Metal Gear better. Got the Spider Man stuff there. There's Survival Kids, Donkey Kong Lands, Ghostbuster games, stuff like Nails and Scales. That's a, a great hidden gem game. So I highly recommend getting one of these Zippo display cases if you have a chance. Across from the Zippo case on top of this shelf, I have my three Robs. I have the Gyromite Rob, 
the Stack Up Rob and the Famicom Rob. And then I got this little Rob poster in the back behind them. Under the Robs, I have this little Wii section. This is basically where I keep some of my favorite Wii games and notable Wii games. Some of my favorites here are Fire Emblem, Radiant Dawn, Pokemon Battle Revolution, and Silent Hill Shattered Memories. Underneath that, I have some of my favorite Xbox 360 games, as well as some notable games such as the Love is Over Catherine's Collector's Edition there, and then Lollipop Chainsaw, and Tornado Outbreak. Below that, I have my original Xbox games, some of my favorites and notable ones. I actually just got Curse not too long ago. Then we got Fatal Frame 2 there. We got Destroy All Humans 2 and Land of the Dead. Fatal Frame 2 is terrifying. Underneath that, a lot of my notable PS3 games here. Some of my favorites, Shadow of the Damned. Another Earth Defense Force, EDF, EDF. And then a hidden gem in my opinion, the Darkness games. They're so much fun. I can't believe they're not more popular. And then here on the bottom, we have some really special strategy guides. I got all the Smash Bros ones here from 64, Melee, Brawl, Wii U, and Ultimate. And then I got a bunch of Pokemon ones here as well from Pokemon Red and Blue. We got Yellow, we got Gold and Silver, Crystal, Ruby and Sapphire, Emerald, Fire Red, Leaf Green. We got Diamond and Pearl, we got Platinum, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. We got White and Black, Black and White 2. We got Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. We got Sun and Moon, Ultra Sun and Moon. And I do have an X and Y one in there at the end. And then some other really cool strategy guides like Perfect Dark, No Mercy, WrestleMania 2000, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask. We got Fire Emblem, Path of Radiance. Star Fox Adventure, Resident Evil, Wind Waker, Metal Gear Solid, Resident Evil 3, Golden Sun Games, Silent Hill, definitely a must. Just want to give a shout out to the art of Fire Emblem Awakening, by the way, that's a really great looking book. So that's the entrance. Let's actually walk in now and we will take a quick look and spin around. Looking back at the entrance above the Zippo Game Boy display case, we can see these Game Boy games. These games are special to me because these are my earliest Game Boy game memories here. Stuff like Tetris, Nails and Scales, Looney Tunes, both Mario's Way Race and Radar Mission, all very nostalgic games. Shout out to Nails and Scales, it's such a hidden gem, I love that game. Here's a transparent pink GBA inbox, behind that I have this Mario RC car and then a little Donkey Kong cart and then I stuck that little sticker there on the, the Zippo case, thought it was quite fitting. Real quick on this shelf here under the Robs, I have the re-released version of the classic Splinter and Shredder. Really love those turtles as a kid, super happy to have those. Now this leads us to my Super Nintendo wall. This thing is awesome. It definitely catches your attention as soon as you walk in the room. Every single one of these Super Nintendo games is meaningful to me, whether it was an old rental, a childhood game, or just an overall favorite. Some notable stuff in there I want to talk about, like the Robocop vs. Terminator special case there, that Zombies Ate My Neighbors and Ghoul Patrol, Pocky and Rocky 1 and 2, Lemmings definitely needs a shout out, the Clay Fighter games there, Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3, of course. Love that game. Then they got the rest of the Mortal Kombats there. You can see Killer Instinct, Street Fighter, Super Bubble Bros. Got the Sim games, Turtles in Time, Super Metroid, of course. Link to the Past there. F-Zero and Biker Mice from Mars. That was an old rental I loved. The Spider-Man games. Uh, Marvel War of the Gems. Such a great game. Love that as a rental when I was a kid. Death and Return of Superman is one of my brother's favorite games. Got the Mickey Mouse stuff, Aladdin. Home Improvement, love the show, hate the game. Got Disney's Lion King and Toy Story, two great games. Definitely got to mention Smart Ball. This is such a hidden gem on the Super Nintendo. It's one of my favorite SNES games. Definitely give that one a play. And I do actually have a mint complete in box Super Mario World. Got the three Donkey Kong countries there. 
Sim Earth, I hate that game, but it was a childhood game, so I had to get it. One of my favorite Super Nintendo games, Super Mario RPG. We got other cool stuff here. And then we got these big boxes. We got Super Mario Paint, Earthbound Big Box Complete, and then the Super Bomberman Party Pack. This game's super nostalgic because we used to rent this and my siblings and my mom and myself would all play this with the multi-tap. Super nostalgic, glad to have that in the collection. Just looking a little bit beyond that, you can see some perler art of Ness, Paula, Jeff, and Pooh from one of my favorite Super Nintendo games, Earthbound. And then like I mentioned before, here's the cast of Super Mario RPG, one of my favorite SNES games. We got Mario, Bowser, Mallow, Geno, and Peach. Down below here is issue number one of Nintendo Power and then issue number 285 of Nintendo Power. I thought having the first and last issues here between the Super Nintendo sign was a really cool idea. Now, down over here, I have a CRT TV. This is a little Toshiba. It's currently playing Stubbs the Zombie for the original Xbox. Again, that's one of my favorite Xbox games. Really excited for the Switch port to come out for that one. Then I have this dresser here. I love dressers because they are neat and tidy and keep things organized. This drawer here, I keep some Overflow DS stuff and Wii games. This drawer here, I keep all my Switch games for easy access. And then finally in the bottom here, I keep a bunch of Sega stuff, Genesis cases, some Saturn stuff, and Sega Master System. Again, I don't like walls and walls of games. Dressers work great to keep things clean, neat and tidy, and have a great presentation. This one over here, this is my controller dresser. Basically, I keep all my controllers in it for the entire game room. Top drawers for Nintendo, that one's for PlayStation, this one's for Xbox, this one is for Saturn and Sega stuff and light guns, and then oddball controllers go down here in the bottom. 3DO, Jaguar, CDI, stuff like that. Jumping back to the Super Nintendo wall here, I have the Sony Trinitron 300 model. On top I have some Pixel Pals and a couple of mushroom lamps. This TV here a fellow collector and friend gave to me and it's absolutely a great TV for early retro gaming. Super Nintendo looks great on it. I love this TV, has really great sound, has beautiful scan lines. Nothing beats this TV for the early consoles. The consoles that I have hooked up to this work so great with this. You can see here I have a TurboGrafx-16 there, has Magical Chase in it. Looks great on this TV. There's my switcher. I have an NES hooked up to it as well, an original PlayStation hooked up to it. My Super Nintendo hooked up to it via S-Video, which is why it looks so great. Then an N64, and Pokemon Puzzle League is in there, one of my favorite 64 games. And then finally, a Genesis Model 1. Shout out to Retro Bird for getting me into Rocket Knight Adventures there. On the side there, I do have an original Xbox 360 hooked up to it, as well as a Wii hooked up via component cables. onto this TV. It's a really tiny Toshiba CRT, the same one that actually I use on the GameCube display out in the other room and it has my CDI 910 hooked up to it and I always remember that I got this Philips CDI at a pawn shop for 40 bucks. Yeah they just thought it was a regular Philips CD player but really it was a 910 CDI. I kept that sticker on there to just remind me of what an amazing deal I got. It's currently running Hotel Mario on it. On top of the TV here, I have all my custom Yoshi Amiibos that I painted. Really looks like a cool little set there. Beside that, I have my Batman CRT with the matching DVD player. I actually used to have a lot of these themed TVs, but ever since I sold my Shrek TV to Ricky Berwick, I honestly kind of lost interest in collecting them, so Batman's one of the few I actually kept. On top, there's a Kyogre figure sitting on it. The Batman CRT is currently playing Are You Afraid of the Dark? Again, one of my favorite childhood shows, and I still enjoy it even to this day. So panning out here so you can see this part of the game room. 
Lots of goodies on this wall. Let's just quickly look down at this CRT here. This is a 1980s Hitachi CRT. This is the exact same model of TV I had as a kid. It's not the same TV, but again, the same model. So happy I got this a few years ago. It's such a nostalgic TV. I used to just sit down in front of this thing and play it. On top, I have the Lego NES and the Lego CRT TV. This was a really expensive Lego set, but it's super cool. Took me and my wife and my son a long time to build it. It's cool because you can crank the sides and it's like you're playing Mario, technically. Moving down here, past Super Mario Bros. 3, I have this Toshiba DVD VCR combo here, which is really cool to have. And then it's on this little mini dresser where I keep a lot of my streaming stuff and hard drives. And I got my Blue Yeti mic in there. So mainly just personal YouTube gear and stuff in there. So just tucked in the behind there on the wall, I have this Link Between Worlds puzzle that me and my wife built. We glued it together and hung it on the wall. Then I got a random Sora figure down there. And then this here, this is something I've also really wanted in my collection for a long time. This is the original line of the Space Jam Monstars. I love Space Jam. When I was a kid, I saw it in the theater twice, and I thought, I have my original figures. I'd love to get them in the box. And I did. All the Monstars, still new in box. So cool. And then I got a couple of Michael Jordans in there too. They were a nice bonus. But yeah, definitely wanted it just for the Monstars. Really happy with that little mini collection. Now, this shelf here, a couple of floating shelves. This bottom one here, this is basically some of my favorite games of all time on this shelf. So if you want to know what I love, look at this shelf. We got stuff up here like Mario Kart Super Circuit for GBA, Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I got State of Decay 2 for the Xbox One. We got Pocky and Rocky for Super Nintendo, Pokemon Red, and Smart Ball. We got Pikmin for GameCube, Left 4 Dead 2, Days Gone, Pokemon Red again, Pokemon Heart Gold, Soul Silver. There's that Mega Man 2, Super Mario RPG, Donkey Kong Country 2, Earthbound, and Zelda A Link to the Past. Fire Emblem Warriors on Switch, The Walking Dead Telltale series, of course Snow Brothers there, and then Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Randomly here is a little Arcanine toy figure and then this beautiful figure of Morrigan sitting on the shelf. Onto this little case here. This case I got at the thrift store for a couple bucks. I didn't know what I was going to do with it and then I decided I'm going to put my NECA Ninja Turtles in there. I absolutely love these NECA Ninja Turtles. It's like they literally jumped out of the movie and into figures. The details on these are fantastic. So, so cool. I love that movie as a kid and just having these figures is like something I wanted as a kid. Just beautiful little collection. They look great in this display case here. You see Casey Jones and Splinter there. We got Donatello being inappropriate. I just can't get over the details on these guys. Like, look at Raph's face. That's exactly how he looked in the movie. Just beautiful, beautiful set. This floating shelf here is dedicated to Mario Kart. But if you look in the corner, you'll see this kind of random controller. That's actually a third party NES turbo controller. It's just nostalgic for me because me and my brothers had that as kids and we used to fight over who got the turbo pad. I found that in a thrift store years ago sealed and I just picked it up because it's nostalgic. But back to Mario Kart, you can see my Super Mario Kart complete in box there. Then we have the Super Famicom Super Mario Kart complete in box. And then I have my Mario Kart RC cars. Yeah, these are super cool. We actually take them out and play with them because they're a lot of fun. If you look here, you can just see how beat up and used they are. They're definitely well loved. Then here we have a Lucky 2 World Nintendo figure. And then my wife made me these Super Mario Kart Perler Arts there. Really cool. I like how she did Lakitu with the stoplight as well. Up next, we have my Poka Shelf. This is one cool thing in my game room that really stands out. I actually have all these Pokemon games from new. I've been into Pokemon ever since it came out. 
I'm so glad I've kept these over the years because Pokemon prices are absolutely insane. At the top of the shelf here we have the Kanto Pokemon Monopoly. Just randomly have the Japanese versions of Smart Ball and Super Mario RPG. Just some Pokemon figures there. A Ghostbusters car and then a DeLorean model that my brother made for me. And then a Rayquaza. And real quick here on the side of the shelf, just some sealed 90s X-Men figures. Professor X, Beast, and Gambit. Now, onto the Pokemon games. It's all the mainline games. They're all complete in box and in nice condition. Starting up here, we have Pokemon Red, Pokemon Blue, Pokemon Yellow. This is the Pokemon Yellow Special Edition Game Boy Color. Then we have Pokemon Gold, Pokemon Silver, Pokemon Crystal, Pokemon Ruby, Pokemon Sapphire, Pokemon Fire Red, then the Pokemon Gold and Silver Special Edition Game Boy Color, Pokemon Leaf Green, Pokemon Emerald, Pokemon Diamond, we got Pokemon Pearl, Pokemon Platinum, Pokemon Heart Gold Big Box, Pokemon Soul Silver Big Box, Pokemon Black, Pokemon White, Pokemon Black 2, Pokemon White 2, Pokemon X, Pokemon Y, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. And I do have the pretty rare Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire 2 pack back there. And then I have the Pokemon Sun and Moon Steel Case 2 pack. And then the Ultra Sun and Moon 2 pack with the Steel Case. One thing that some people ask me is what are your favorite Pokemon games? I love them all, honestly, except Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon, but my number one favorite would definitely have to be Pokemon Heart Gold. It's just such a great game. I love it. And then number two would be Pokemon Black 2. All I got to say is World Tournament. And then number three would be Pokemon Red. Heading back over here under the CDI, I have a dresser. And inside here, I keep all my Super Nintendo games, all the loose carts. Lots of great games in there, nice and organized, alphabetical order. This drawer as well, more Super Nintendo games, as well as some Super Famicom. Shout out to the Sailor Moon games, they're a lot of fun. And then I also keep a lot of my handhelds that we play on a regular basis in there. Bottom shelf, my N64 games. I actually recently just got the N64 N labels, and then I was about to put them on and I thought, hey, what if I have to open the games or I wanna do an upgrade? I can't. So I actually got these acrylic protectors here and I stuck the labels to the protectors themselves. So then I have no problems opening them up or doing upgrades later on. I thought that was pretty smart. I actually also keep some loose Game Boy and Game Gear and GBA games in with these N64 games. Up next, on top of this CRT here, I have the entire collection of the Burger King Pokemon card toys. These are from the Pokemon the Movie 2000. I recently did a video opening these up and showing you what they do, so check that video out if you want to see them more in detail. This is just such a cool, nostalgic collection of things that I really like and they're so colorful so I'm happy I could display them in the game room. They are sitting on my Sony Trinitron HD widescreen TV. This TV is amazing. This TV hands down is my favorite TV in the game room even more so than my 4k TV. Running component cables on GameCube is just beautiful. It's the best most beautiful way to play GameCube. This TV also has a cool mode called Twin View Mode, which yes, you can have two different games playing on the same screen at once. It's crazy. Hooked up to this TV here, I have my Halo Xbox 360, I have a Dreamcast, my Crystal Xbox, my original childhood Nintendo GameCube with matching Platinum GBA player, and then a fat PS2 there as well. Again, just such an awesome TV. I love it. Beside that Trinitron, I have an even bigger Trinitron. This thing is a beast. It's big, it's beautiful, it has a great sound system on it. Well, kind of an awkward time to be going down on the screen, but uh, it also has the twin view mode, 
which I have Plumbers Don't Wear Ties on the left, and I have Space Jam for the Saturn on the right. On top, I have some Pokemon figures here, including the three Legends from the Burger King Pokemon card toys, my three favorite stuffies in Pokemon, Luxray, Arcanine, and Shiny Umbreon, some more figures there. Again, this is just another really great looking TV, and it's a beast. I really struggled getting this thing in, but it's really nice to play on. Down in the bottom, hooked up to this TV, I have my Sega 32X and Sega CD with Genesis Model 2. Then I also have a Nintendo GameCube there, and then a splitter, my Sega Saturn. Then I have my Panasonic 3DO top loader and a region free DVD player. Next up behind that Sony Trinitron, on this wall I have all of my nostalgic childhood NES games complete in box. All these games have some kind of meaning to me, just like the rest of them in the game room. Just love looking at these box arts. And then here I have a Super Smash Bros for 3DS, in store promo sign, and then a little amiibo sign as well. Some notable games up here, stuff like Captain Planet. Friday the 13th, Silver Surfer, I have a love-hate relationship with that game. Got the Final Fantasy, Tailspin, Snoopy's a good one, Total Recall, Back to the Future, Star Tropics, Batman, Blaster Master, Double Dragons, Bucky O'Hare, Ice Climbers, Mario Bros, all super nostalgic childhood games for me. Contra, Castlevania, got both Zeldas 1 and 2, Action 52 there, and then Cheat'em in 1 and 2 as well. Here on the end of this wall, I have a really nice Toshiba HD widescreen TV. This thing also has a beautiful picture and great sound. It's currently running Marvel vs. Capcom 3 for the PS3, which on top I have one hooked up here. It's modified with a 500 gig hard drive, got a Mega Man Funko there, a couple of Metroid figures, and then a Bowser stuffy right on there. Down below, in this dresser, I keep some Xbox games here. I got some original Xbox and some Xbox One games and a few 360. Second drawer is all Xbox 360 games, just more overflow games that I don't have room for on a, a shelf with my favorites. Still some really good solid titles in there. And then this bottom drawer here, even more Xbox 360 games. The Xbox 360 is such a great console, so many great titles on it. Here I just have an Xbox 360 arcade box on the floor, along with my Beatles Rock Band, just up there on the side, and a few other boxes. And then here's my GE Space Maker CRT. I don't have it hooked up full time, but it's kind of fun just to pull it out and play something on it. It's such a small screen. It's literally smaller than a GameCube. And then I have the Batman Legacy DVD set on top. I actually like those movies. And then I have this really cool Pikmin 3 in-store standee that's uh, really cool since I love Pikmin then on top I have this really cool Dawn of the Dead 2 pack VHS collector's edition kind of thing with this little flappy door thing it's really cool and then I have just a promo cube on top with some switch stuff including Super Smash Bros Ultimate all right here's the iconic N64 shelf this is the shelf that you see at the beginning of every video. It's definitely one of the coolest things in my game room. So let's go ahead and take a look at this area together in depth. Off to the side here we have a bunch of childhood nostalgic video games here. We got Pokemon Stadium 2, Puzzle League, Banjo-Kazooie, Banjo-Tooie. Got stuff like Spider-Man, Toy Story 2, Superman 64. 1080, Way Race 64, Excite Bike 64, Glover, Quest 64. I hate that game, but I had it as a kid. Just below here, I have some Batman and Robin figures, and then a couple of Batman Forever figures. I had these toys as a kid, and I just had a lot of fun with them. And a lady posted these for 10 bucks a piece locally, sealed. So I picked up the ones that I wanted from the set, and yeah, they're just really nostalgic. And then these two here. The Riddler and Two-Face, 
I just had those for a birthday one year and they're really nostalgic toys for me so I like to display them in the game room. Swinging over here on the side of the shelf I just have a Super Mario RPG strategy guide and then my Earthbound strategy guide. Jumping over to this side I have a Donkey Kong Country 2 strategy guide, a Sonic 3 Tiger handheld re-release, and then this really cool Resident Evil 2 Claire Redfield with zombie action figure set still sealed. Up here at the top we got a lot of cool stuff. The thing that stands out the most would be the N64 Pokemon Stadium battle set. I remember when I first saw that artwork as a kid I was so hyped for Pokemon Stadium. Just such a nice artwork there and yeah really nostalgic. On the side there I have a Mario 64 Japanese version and then a bunch of my N64 DD games. Got a Conker figure there and a Banjo figure. Got a Mewtwo figure there with Pokemon Stadium, the bo big box, as well as the Hey You Pikachu with the big box. And then this is my Nintendo Power 100 controller. I got this from my fellow friend and collector and it's actually brand new unused. Super cool, I'm glad to have that in the collection. Below that, you can kind of see my N64 acrylic sign. And then here they are, the N64 consoles. Now each console has a game in the background. These are just some of my favorite N64 games. Here's the Jungle Green with Donkey Kong 64. Here we have the Grape with Zelda Majora's Mask. Here's Super Smash Bros for the 64 with this cool, fantastic promo flyer there. And then my favorite N64 version, the Ice Blue. Then here's the Gold N64 with the Collector's Edition of Zelda Ocarina of Time. We'll just skip over this one real quick, over to Perfect Dark. And this is the Japanese Blue and White N64. Same one that I put in my kiosk. Then I have a Smoke Black here that is clear and it has WrestleMania 2000 with it. Funny story there, I traded a bunch of my Super Nintendo games in at the local video game store when I was a kid, and I ended up getting WrestleMania 2000 and Superman 64. Needless to say, I played a lot of WrestleMania 2000. Here is my watermelon, which has Mario 64 with it. Another quick story, when we were kids, my mom let us get a new N64 to get rid of the old black one, and she said we could pick. I wanted the ice blue, my sister wanted the watermelon. Well, she was the only girl and the youngest, so we got the watermelon, which is okay, I guess. And then over here we have the orange one with Mario Kart 64. And then the centerpiece. This is my Diahawks N64, and it is sitting on my N64 DD, the N64 disk drive. Super rare thing, one of the coolest things in my collection. And in behind there, a couple of DD games as well. To the left of the shelf here, some more N64 games. Some notable stuff like Space Invaders. I actually got the Yooka-Laylee just sitting up there because it looks like an N64 game. With the little cool cart as well from Limited Run. Very similar to Banjo-Kazooie. Then we got No Mercy there, Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Ocarina of Time. This one here I got a shout out. Space Station Silicon Valley. Yoshi Story, Diddy Kong Racing, and Goldeneye. And then this here. This is one of my favorite things in the game room as well. My wife made me this out of Perler Art. This is the Mega Man 2 boss screen. This thing is so cool. Like, I just love this thing so much. She did such a great job on it. Just below the Mega Man boss screen, I have my original... Kenner Ghostbusters house. This thing I've had over the years and I got it back from my mom's house when she moved and I still had the original car as well. My youngest son loves this thing. I'm glad I was able to keep it and let him enjoy it as much as I did. All right so this is pretty neat here. This is my Vectrex. Amazingly it still works 100% in 2021. I love the Vectrex. It's super cool. Beside that I have some VHS tapes, again WrestleMania 17, one of my favorite WrestleManias. Got a Tim Allen tape there, some G.I. Joe, and then the Back to the Future VHS Collector's Edition there, which is really cool with a big box. 
including the secrets of Back to the Future. Then here I have my Atari 2600 wood grain with a Space Invader on it, and it's running E.T. And I got this really huge, like, Emerson TV remote. It's gimmicky, I just thought it'd be funny to keep in the retro room. Then here I have my Intellivision, and it currently has my favorite Intellivision game in it, Snafu. And then this little wood grain thing here sitting under the 2600 just holds a bunch of VHS tapes. Thought it looked pretty good there. All of that is sitting on my 1980s console television. This is a Hitachi television. It still works great all these years later. It's so cool to be able to play classic retro video games on a period correct TV. One thing that's really cool about this is I have a ton of different things to play in this game room and people will come over to this TV here, sit down, grab the Coleco Telstar Pong console and play around a Pong. It's just amazing that the simplest game is still so fun all these years later. Next up over here, I have a Bowser Evolution poster that Panda Queen got me. And then beside that, I have my son's childhood baby bib. It's an NES controller. He actually used that and I just wanted to keep it because he's grown out of it. And then in this little closet area, I keep all my wacky controllers and unique controllers. So many different ones. I got stuff like the Slime controllers in here, the Resident Evil 4 PS2 chainsaw controller, the N64 Power Glove. I got a Wu-Tang controller and a PS1 flight stick. Some sealed controllers back there. The Yamaha dirt bike controller. Just lots of really cool unique stuff. The PS4 500 million and even this Smackdown controller. So random but pretty cool. I also have a DVD player hooked up to a TV in here. And then here I have my last two of my funky CRTs. I have the Cars Lightning McQueen CRTV and then my Spider-Man CRT TV. Again, just lost interest in these after selling Shrek to Ricky Berwick. On top of Spider-Man, I have Queen Rock Montreal. Queen was such a huge influence to me growing up musically, so I have to represent Queen in the game room. Behind that, I have the Wonder Years Complete Series there. What a great series. And then right on the wall here randomly, I have Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue sealed VHS. Down in front, I got G Generation X figures there. We got Road Dog, the One Billy Gun, China, and X Pac. Just representing some more wrestling. Then on the dresser they're sitting in, first drawer here, I just got my Wii U games. And then I keep a bunch of different kind of big boxes and special editions in here as well for PS4 and other consoles, PSP. And then some more loose handhelds right there. Next drawer down, I keep a bunch of just random stuff here. I got like Sega Dreamcast stuff in here, CDI, Turbo Graphics, got Vectrex, Sega CD, Jaguar, Jaguar CD, Engage, then my box Jaguar game. So kind of just like a big jumble of stuff in there. And then here's my junk drawer of the game room. This is just full of accessories, wires, memory cards, multi-taps. Just pretty much all the random loose accessories you can think of are in there. And then finally the bottom drawer is the old school stuff. Got 2600 games, ColecoVision, 5200, 7800, Magnavox Odyssey, and television, and like Jaguar carts and stuff like that. Now, on to one of the coolest things in my game room. Probably the coolest thing in the retro room. This is the Samsung GX gaming TV. It has speakers built in the door. This thing is so cool. I was so happy to find one locally. I just love how you can close it off. It really looks like an in-store kind of demo TV. It has a built-in subwoofer so the sound is great as well. It's currently playing the Donkey Kong Country TV show from back in the 90s. I really love this TV. It's a great piece in the game room. Now what I actually did was I mounted it to the wall on this CRT mount. So it's literally just up in the wall. It literally looks like an in-store display TV. So that was cool. Underneath it I have a sealed South Park Stick of Truth for the Xbox 360 Collector's Edition. 
and then it's sitting on this huge standee it's for the 3ds this is the mario party top 100 which i actually love that game despite everyone hating on it and then over here the, the 3ds remake of mario and luigi superstar saga with bowser's minions just a really cool standee and then real quick here beside the lightning mcqueen tv i have a donkey kong board game that i forgot to mention Next up, I got a couple of bar stools here. One is Mortal Kombat, one is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and they go to this thing. This is a dream item of mine. This is the Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 Arcade. Yeah, wow. I actually used to have the Mortal Kombat Arcade one up, but after I got this thing, I sold off that other one. Why have that knockoff when you can have the real thing? These bar stools work great just to pull up through the arcade and give it a play. I've mentioned before how much I love Mortal Kombat 3 back in the day, so I'm super happy to get that. Beside the arcade, I just have some random stuff like some figures here. Home Improvement Complete Series. This Ryu statue. Gotta give a shout out to this Two-Faced McDonald's Batman Forever Cup. That's super cool. Got an E.T. record in the back. Then I got a Venom and Carnage set there. This is a cool little glow-in-the-dark Boo Mario set. So yeah, the Boos glow, which is really cool. Up here showing Left 4 Dead some love. Got a metal sign there, and then a sealed smoker, the NECA figure. And then I have my original Buzz Lightyear Tamagotchi there, and then a Sonic the Hedgehog board game. Got some boxes in here, Resident Evil 5 for 360, and the Final Fantasy Special Edition for 360. Up here, I have the re-releases of the original Kenner Ghostbusters. We got Slimer there, Winston, got Egon, then we got Fankman and Stance. And then of course, Stay Puffed. And then my favorite Left 4 Dead campaign, Dark Carnival Metal Sign there. Right under that I have a sealed Arcanine figure that just recently came out. So got one to open, one to keep sealed. Right here on top of the arcade, I have a Virtual Boy box, and then I have my Left 4 Dead Xbox magazine, and then the PC version of Left 4 Dead 2. Now here is a big stack of Left 4 Dead games 1 and 2. Why do I have so many of these? And there you can just see Jack in the back there. Yeah, tons of these games. Why? Because I forgot to mention that we love to have 8 player Left 4 Dead LAN parties here in this game room. That's right, we all cram together in here and play Left 4 Dead LAN Party. It's so much fun, we have a blast. It's really, really fun. I highly recommend LAN parties, especially with Left 4 Dead. A game like that just never gets old. It's, it's truly a blast and some great bonding with my son and my friends. So yeah, that's why I have so many copies of that. And honestly, I have more than enough. I just pick them up when I see them at thrift stores if they're cheap. Then over here I have a Baraka figure, and then underneath that I have an original Jade figure. Those are my two favorite characters from Mortal Kombat, Baraka and Jade, so I thought they'd be good beside the arcade. And then in the bottom here is just the original Game Boy carrying case. Now back to this arcade. Again, this is a dream item of mine, and there's a bit of a crazy story behind it. That red GameCube kiosk that I got, yeah. It actually came with this. The way the lady posted it was, she said, buy the Mortal Kombat Arcade and I'll throw in this GameCube kiosk with it. And like, what are the odds of my dream GameCube kiosk being included with my dream arcade cabinet? Like, it was destiny, it was meant to be. Um, just, I can't believe my luck sometimes collecting. So yeah, I got my dream kiosk and my dream arcade all in one swoop just absolutely love this thing now something I want to mention about this arcade is I love Mortal Kombat 3 but you can get pretty tired of just the same thing over and over so what I did was I actually modified this and I put in Pandora's box 6 so then I can have a variety of different games to play in it now before you get upset in the comments I didn't completely demod it all I did was I added Pandora's box 6 I left the original board and everything inside 
So if I want to reconvert it back, I just have to move some wires around and change a couple connections. Next up, beside the arcade, I have this little Sega station, I like to call it. In front of it, I have this Boo bean bag though. So the Boo's good because you can literally just plop it anywhere in this game room, have a seat on them, and play anything. But back to the Sega station, I just have this little tiny PVM here. And on top, I have a Sega Genesis Model 3 playing Streets of Rage 2. There's a Knuckles figure there. But yeah, I got this little PVM for free. This lady used to work in a clinic or something, and she was moving, and she had this, and she just said, come get it. And I picked it up. It worked. Like, dang. Super cool. Has a great little picture on it. In the drawers underneath, though, I keep all my Sega carts here, which is really convenient to pop in and play. In the bottom drawer, I just keep a couple extra streaming things and some more carts, and then some burnt DVDs and some controllers. And just tucked in beside there's a few boxed handheld stuff there on display. Now if we look above the Sega station, you'll see some more boxed consoles and accessories just kind of shoved in beside the arcade. If you look carefully, you'll see some Game Boy boxes here. You can see Pokemon Pinball there. You can see Pocket Bomberman. You can see Super Mario Bros. Deluxe. And then we have Pokemon Puzzle Challenge. We have Pokemon the trading card game. That's my original copy that I bought new. We have the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Seasons and the Legend of Zelda Oracle of Ages. We have Zelda Link's Awakening DX, Tetris Attack, Speedy Gonzales, Toy Story 3. We have Spider-Man, Kid Dracula, Amazing Tater. We have Spud's Adventure, Snow Brothers, the super rare Mortal Kombat 1 and 2 combo pack. Metroid Prime 2, Operation C, Kid Icarus, Golf, Balloon Kid, Kirby's Dreamland, Dr. Mario, Tennis, Super RC Pro-Am, and Mr. Chins. All of those are either nostalgic childhood video games or obviously some high-end video games there, so I like to have them on display. Looking into the closet, you can see a sealed copy of the Super Mario Bros. Game & Watch there, and then... In the actual closet, you can see all my loose Space Jam figures, which I've had since I was a kid. Mario's holding Super Mario Bros. 3 right in there. And then we got a Mario chest there. And then in the back, just a bunch of different random stuffies, like an original Raichu backpack. Um, we got an original Charizard there, a Master Ball stuffy. Got the Koopa Kids. We got the 20th anniversary Pokemon stuffies in there. So just a bunch of stuff. Then up front here, we have the re release of the original Ninja Turtles. I had those as a kid with my brothers and they're super nostalgic toys so I thought it was great to display them here. I got the Hot Wheels turtle van there as well on both sides, thought that was pretty cool to have. Got a kind of random old school original Bowser figure sealed there and then Oogie Boogie making an appearance in the game room. And then this turtle van here, it's actually the complete cartoon series DVD set. Yeah, super cool, I love that thing. And then we just got a random Ralph here, ready to wreck it. And then there's some more random boxes and stuff. There's Oregon Trail back there, some NES boxes there, my Gizmondo box, a PS2 box. Kind of a mess, just stuff some boxes back there. And in front of all of that, I have my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Arcade 1-Up. I was really on the fence about getting this one. But I thought, you know, it'd be really cool to have the four player be able to play with my kids. Turtles is already on my other arcade now with Pandora's Box 6. So I was like, do I need it twice? But again, the four player really sold me on it. It's so much fun to have four people playing at once. So I don't regret it. This was actually my housewarming present to myself. So it was a, a really cool thing to add to the game room. Well, there it is the brand new house game room tour. This definitely took a lot longer than I had originally anticipated. My goal from the start was to cover everything in depth. I just wanted to do one awesome game room tour of my dream game room. So that's why it took so long. I really appreciate everyone coming by and watching the game room tour. Hopefully you all enjoyed it. If there's anything you want to see in detail, by all means, let me know in the comments below. Get a hold of me on social media. 
Whatever you like. I'd be happy to do some videos on anything in this game room. Now that my ultimate dream game room is complete, it's time to focus on enjoying it, playing games with friends and family, and just appreciating what I've gotten over the years. I truly am content with my collection, and again, I want to thank everyone that helped make that possible. Finally, I just want to thank everyone for watching. Do me a favor, please like and comment and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Alright, that's going to wrap up today's video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. You can also follow me on social media. The information is in the description. I want to thank everybody for watching. I am the Console Collector. And until the next video, happy gaming.